Hello, everybody, and welcome to season 45 of Spine Chill. Uh, I'm here today, John Wolf, one of your senior co hosts, here with Gary, senior co, uh, co host Hot Cross. Hello. Here with us once again. Uh, senior co host Sino Beats. I am here. I am present. And junior co host Doug Running Man. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Yeah, thanks for having me. Can I ask a question? How come it was Gary Hot Cross and Lloyd Sino? beats and i was running man like why didn't i get a beat in between my two words sorry oh, i just is this, is this is this another another way to try and drag down the juice it's like i don't get it i don't get a I dramatic no disrespect beat. it's just because I, just, I i i struggled to remember their names so it had to take a second oh, and remember and then yours just rolled off the tongue so okay Excuse I feel me? like I'm being played here. That, 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 that is a different issue Gary. that needs to be dealt with. There's a new Don't worry issue. about it, Gary. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. Excited to talk about video games with the lads. That's lads, right. Lads, lads, lads. Me lads. too. Well, how was, uh, was y'all's week? Do anything fun? Mm-hmm. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> me too. Moving right along. No. Yeah, no. It's a good week, man. Um, I played a lot of variety this week. I played a lot of games. A lot of different games. Oh, out of the norm for me. So, um, I played Sonic Superstars, which is uh, what I was excited about this week. It was the newest Sonic game came out in October, apparently. Mm. <clears throat> just sort of turned into a thing. I was live on Twitch, and I was talking about just conversations go all over the place, right? And we started talking about Sonic. I'm like, man, when's the last Sonic game that came out? And then I looked. I'm like, man, one came out in October. <laughs> That's crazy. I never even heard about it. Yeah, Maybe I didn't either. Like, yeah, I've yeah, this one. So apparently, it was it came out to compete with the new Mario game, which I don't remember what the new Mario game was. Sonic and Mario still. Oh, Mario Wonder. Fighting? Yeah, Mario Wonder. So it was like the direct competitor to Mario Wonder, and like everybody was excited about it in chat. And oh, getting pumped okay. And... So I was like, yeah, I never played it, but I'd love to. And then somebody gifted it, and because I, I made a comment, I was like, if somebody gifted it, it's sixty bucks. I'm not going to buy it, but if somebody gifted it, I played on stream two day, and somebody did it. So then I was like, well, I'm a man of my word, and I played it, and I ended up. Really enjoying it. It was a very challenging game. Um, it was a nostalgia trip for me. I had played a lot of those games when I was a kid. Yeah, and yeah definitely. I up, like completing the whole game, including the horrific final <laughs> boss, which is super, super challenging. So, it's awesome. What's the soundtrack like? Oh, it's incredible. I think you enjoy oh, it a lot. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, I love me a Sonic it soundtrack. Was, <laughs> it was super classic. It was like, it reminded me of like the classic size rolling 2D. I mean, there, there's like no dialogue in the game, it's all done through. You know, cartoon. Oh, they make little noises, stuff. little emote yeah. things yeah. appear. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm into that. But no actual, no actual word dialogue, and then the music, like I said, you said, was classic Sonic music. It was. Was the final boss like the? Is it the Egg <coughs> Emperor thing? What is that? The bit. It, was the final boss like the Egg Emperor, like the big giant robotic mech? Yeah, he's a giant oh, mech. Cool. Oh, cool. Mech dude, and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. Oh, that sounds cool. That and sounds sick. Mul multiple phases of this oh. mech that are insane, and then yeah, a lot of. uh no chance to restore rings once the fight starts, so like you gotta be kind of perfect. You can only get hit a couple times. It's really fun. Mm, nice. Really challenging. Wow. Like very challenging. Very. When, when was what was the last uh, song game you played before this one? Like, I literally maybe the yeah. Sonic Adventure games for the Dreamcast. Yeah. File? I don't know. It's that. Oh hell that. yeah! Sino like is into the chat. <laughs> yeah, welcome, welcome, Sino. Yeah, my my cringe Escape obsessions. The city. Oh, oh, these games are kind of shitty, but I still love them. <laughs> <laughs> these games are kind of shitty. Escape from the city. <laughs> yeah, I think just... the last last one I played was I think Sonic R. Maybe was the most recent one I played, honestly, which was terrible. Oh. Sonic oh, the racing, racing one. Yeah. When did you oh. play Sonic R, John? <laughs> when it came out. You've not. Wait, you never played Sonic Mania. Out? No, I didn't. Pl I was. I played Sonic R and I played Sonic 3D Blast, and I was like, these are so shit. And I just didn't give 3D Jesus. Sonic you haven't, a, a wait, chance wait. after that. You haven't played a Sonic game since 1997. Apparently not. Oh well, I mean, I, when did Sonic CD come out? Because I played that one, but I think that was before that. This man just said Sonic CD in public. That's crazy. That's Sonic CD is on. is fire. That's one of the best. I know ones. it is. That's just a, it's like the oldest game ever. That game is ninety three. The last I was 10. <laughs> I'm old and I was ten when that game came out, John. Yeah, like, yeah Jesus, that, that's, that's an old crazy. one. I played that one on a joystick. I'm so happy. Which is like the worst way to play it. Right I love. Did anybody? Sonic. Did anyone play Sonic Heroes? Nope. No. Oh, what unsung hero that game was. That game sucks. 
Well, I'm sorry. Oh. No, no, it's not again. Wow. Wow. Again, I love the cheesiness. Where? I love the characters, sorry, yeah. but the, like it? the triple character thing, oh, I just I was, could not vibe it with. It was so weird. I loved it. That was a 2003. Sonic yeah. Heroes. Yeah, see, that's oh. the thing. Like the the soundtrack is always it like did, a the, cheesy, guilty pleasure. But I think the soundtrack carried it. I think I think it has the best Sonic soundtrack. <clears throat> I, I did, did that. That was... watch the Game Grumps play Sonic 06. Does that count? Is that the one? I mean, of, basically, that, they played that, that for a I, long time. That's oh, the one that had Silver the Hedgehog in it, right? Yes. It's I think no I played use. that one. It's no use. Great, great, great. <laughs> yeah, I, I watched a hundred episodes of them playing that shit. <laughs> yeah, that was a classic. Was I still, terrible. I still think about that game every so often more than I ever should. Yeah, same. That game did suck. I did play that yeah. one. I forgot about that it game. I, I, it was pretty bad. Removed it from my brain. See, like, after playing 3D Blast and R, like, I saw that game, I saw them play that game, and I was like, so this is what they're doing these days? I was right was, to stay away. Wasn't there one where he was a werewolf? Yeah. Oh, was that <laughs> Unleashed, I think? That was it, or, yeah. Yeah, Unleashed, yeah, yeah, Sonic like Unleashed. And it's like a 360 uh, game or something, that was yeah. a yeah. strange one I think there was one where he was, was a knight, but they, they really did start going like, eh, There's yeah, a wee one where he's like Sonic and the... The Dark Knight or something like that as well. I really liked um if you want classic Sonic, Sonic Mania was very good. That's what I, I heard. heard. Yeah, was I heard Sonic Generations really good? Because I heard that one was pretty good too. I heard that was good, yeah. I like that one. Um hmm. not as much as Sonic Mania, but it had like a cool the new Sonic meets the old Sonic thing. And like Got the it. new Tales meets the old Tales, etc. So it was like a kind of love letter to how the series has come along the years and i thought it was quite clever because oh, you yeah, like this, revisit levels this is i, okay. this is, I always this loved is on, classic sonic a lot more yeah this is on steam and it yeah looks one two and three AF. yeah it looks really it looks like classic Sonic. this looks like yeah this looks I just, great i just i just miss old sonic's design when he's a little pot belly he liked chili dogs you know it, why did a lot of like game design move away from making the characters chonky like pikachu Pikachu yeah. used mm. to be a right little chonker, and then they like turned him into like a very they like mascotized him. Which I mean, I don't like hate the way he looks now, but I kind of miss the chonker. He looked more like a mouse, I guess. Yeah. Before, but he was he went from cute to being like I don't I mean, know, you... athletic. That's yeah, I wanted to make him look more badass. I guess. Like, <laughs> yeah. I wanna make sure he wants to be a fighter. I mean, if you look at like the know. original I'm Pikachu horrible. sprite from like Pokemon Red and Blue, he's like pretty sizable lad. An absolute he's, unit, one might he's say. He's a little unit. I love you know, him so I, much. One, one might call him a uh, brick shit house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I remember those days. Absolutely. And like the original base set Pikachu card, he was still pretty sizable. Oh, little beefy boy. A little he beefy was. boy. But I thought he was cuter back then. Yeah. Um, I agree. I, I, like, I, like, I like classic cheeks. Pikachu better, yeah. That's right. Classic Pikachu was better, I agree. I think we all agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Make chunker. Pikachu great again. And Sonic. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Are, and Sonic. Are, we Poke are we Pokemon boomers right now? Like, yes, we are. Like, yeah. okay, we, we I was are... going to say. We, we are acting uh, like what is known in the Pokemon community as Gen 1ers, but it's um, condescendingly spelled <laughs> W-U-N. Gen 1ers. Oh, it's a, it's a derogatory dumb. term for, oh. for so. old school Pokemon fans. It's oh, for funny. people that got it. They're just jealous because we got to get the original card sets. You know, they, they don't ever get the joy. <laughs> if they ever want to open an original jungle booster pack, they have to spend oh. $200. Like, we didn't. Yeah, we just you went don't to have shop to... Bought them. You, can't, you can't have a rational argument with these people. They're absolutely <laughs> off the wall. <laughs> hey, Game Freak, uh, a podcast of men in their 30s here. Just wanted to let you know, uh, make Pikachu go back to the old design, please. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's, let's start uh, some signatures. Well, some of the cards. Some, Wait, do we do we start at change.org? Like, do we just do yeah, change thing? exactly? Like, yeah, Let's start at change.org. We can make think, this happen. Yeah. I think for the 25th anniversary, the card set they did bring back some of the old designs of Pikachu. They did. They've they've oh, done yeah. like um packs where they brought back the original cards and like a sort of new re-release as well for a while, so that people can be like, oh, this is what Mewtwo looked like in the original card set. Wow, he's kind of dog shit. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's actually not very uh, good at. Yeah, is this original Mewtwo? Didn't he have like sixty where... HP or something? I remember like yeah, original HP. Mewtwo was yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. He, he I the mean, he you sucked remember. as a card. The the only thing that you could do with that Mewtwo was make a really annoying deck, which was like I think it was like one Mewtwo fifty nine psychic energy, and you just used barrier every turn until you decked out the opponent. Jesus it was called Christ. Mulligan Mewtwo because the opponent would take their Mulligan, they draw two more cards. 
and there was no hand size limit, so you could just deck them out. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. looking at the original card now. Oh. You discard yeah. an energy from you two, and it, the opponent all effects of attacks, including damage. Yeah. So you nullified. would just use barrier every single turn, and you would just have unlimited psychic energy. That's all anybody used, used that card for. Nobody ever used it for anything else. The one Pokemon deck I made when I was a kid, <laughs> it was very similar to that. It was the Alakazam and Chansey combo. Oh my where god. Where Alakazam damage can move Chansey. damage counters. Oh. Yeah, I was... I'm sorry, I know. You're right, you're right. You should... You should mock me for that. Yeah, you I could, yeah, I'm I am judging low key in my head. Like right the now. most unfun deck where I'll explain it to the audience if you don't know. Alakazam can move damage counters and Chansey can use an ability called Scrunch that nullifies damage and then she can like heal up. And she so, has 120 HP, mm, which yeah. is which was at that time the max you could have in the game. Like that was the highest. Yeah, it was only her and Charizard. Yeah. That's right. And the average Back HP the of other Pokemon was like fifty, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, I would like manipulate the damage and then force the opponent to draw cards until they ran out, and then I would win. So I was really fun. I was a fun kid. Yeah, <laughs> fun yeah, popular was... child. <laughs> See, I never really got into playing the Pokemon card game itself. I had a deck. I tried it. Didn't like it. I just Where... collected them because I like the way they look. It wasn't. I think it was past my like. I think I was by the time Pokemon the card game became a thing. Like I was already like I'd aged out of it. Like I played Magic the Gathering yeah. growing up. Like I was hard common into Magic. Yeah. Um, but I think by the time, because when did when did the when did the card game like? I, I I'm on the I'm on I the list. I'm like, like, I would say ninety seven, ninety six. Oh, I think it was I think it was like ninety nine or ninety eight. I think it was a bit so later than that. There's maybe, like a little delay wrong. usually to come to the West from like Japan. Okay, yeah, I think, well, I think, yeah, I think, came, I think they came out in '96 or '97. Then they got to us around, yeah, probably around '98, '99. Well, and then I was, and this is like not even a joke. I was in Alaska, so like it's another couple year delay before things start to happen up there too. So no, that's like dead no, 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 no. Like, no, no, no we, I, I, yeah, I we're you. like it was. It would have been like too late. So by the time I was graduating high school, probably is when it would have started picking up in, in Alaska. So because '99, I was like I was a junior in high school. You never got to experience all the playground fights. Because you traded a card, and then people would regret it, and then they'd stop fighting. Oh, people got punched in the face over Magic the Gathering where I grew up, so no, oh, that's, okay. that, that's a thing. Yeah, same Whoa. thing. Then. Rough streets remember, of yeah. Magic the Gathering. Damn. Bro, we used to go. We used to go to the library, and we would like rent out. We you know we'd we'd sign out the conference room in the library, and all of us that played Magic, we'd go and we'd bring our cards and we would trade and do stuff. And one time, a couple of the Magic kids were like, the Magic beef, kids. They were they were beefing. And dude, dude told one dude, he said, go out or come with me outside. I'm going to punch you in the face. And, <laughs> and then they did it. They went outside and the guy calls bluff. He just punched him in the face. Joy like, love. Even as kids, we went outside to get into fights, even though the only reason we did that was because the television told us that's true. what you do. Do you want to take this outside? Yeah. Like, just do it. Just punch me in the library. Don't don't be an animal you can't attack someone you can't attack someone in the in the conference room while you're trading magic cards no it's a sacred place you do it outside yeah right with the yeah, animals. Obviously. also the Take adults have more power there but in the playground it's like jungle law you know yeah, I guess, yeah. <laughs> survival of the yeah, fittest true, lord of the true. flies on the playground dude yeah. we, rule, we rule ourselves true I think, I think when i used to go to the library we used to go in to play uh beyblades and Yu-Gi-Oh cards Man, so See, I missed the so Beyblade thing, but I was in oh, yeah. I was into Yu-Gi-Oh. Which, stuff. looking back, I'm like Yu-Gi-Oh, terrible card game, <laughs> terribly balanced. Like, there's no cost for anything. It's insane. It's worse now. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. It's so but, much like, worse now. Well, well, even even when Yu-Gi-Oh first came out, it was just like play this card, destroy all monsters on the field. What? Oh yeah, and for Black free. Hole. And that's how they all. That's how all those cards were. You just play this for free. Yeah, it's yeah. um when I played Duel Links for a while when that came out, which oh. is like a faster variant of Yu-Gi-Oh, it still was kind of like turn one, wait for the opponent to do like seven chain link things to special summon bullshit. Mm. Okay, now it's my turn. I do my bullshit and it's like just bullshit. I was gonna clashing. say don't because yeah. like we we were playing Duel Links at the same time. I think when we were first like getting to know each other, so no and on like streaming stuff. Yeah, oh no, like no, we we played it like I think in person. Oh in we America. did play yeah. no, yeah. we did play it on with mobile, each other. Right. And I had that yeah. like Ice Warrior deck. Yes, yeah. Because like mm. I, I thought we were gonna have a fun little battle. I was sitting there with all my, my silly little cards. I built a little fun deck, and then you just chained everything and destroyed me. I was like, oh, yeah, he chancy Alakazam you. Yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah, I got chancy Alakazam. I really want to pick up another like. So I'm I'm lazy. I don't like doing cards in person. I don't like having to think about the numbers. I have bad ability to calculate in my head. I always forget shit. But I want to get into something like. Either Hearthstone or like Magic oh. the Gathering Arena. 
Lloyd, mm. I was just going to say, Lloyd, can we start playing Hearthstone? I used to go hard on that game back in the day. Because John I plays was... Hearthstone, right? As you well. play Hearthstone? I, I played it for a very long time, but I recently stopped a few months oh. ago. I was like, I, I ha something's got to give on my time. And so I chose the easiest one to let go, which was Hearthstone. Although the it baby. wasn't easy. Yeah. It was hard. Ah. <laughs> I do miss it still. still. So was... um, should we, this isn't like a book club thing, but I kind of want to get back into a card game, but I want friends who are also going through the same experience as me. Would you guys, do you want to do Hearthstone or Magic the Gathering? Or you know? I, I... I I would be more tempted, I'd be more tempted to learn magic because I always wanted to. I, when I was growing up, my brother was playing magic. I was doing Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon. So he tried to teach me magic, but he just crushed me. He gave me a deck and then just demolished me for some sick mm. joy. And you're like, this isn't really fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, this so, sucks. So I never played magic after that. You know, the game looks cool. And the art is gorgeous on the card. Yeah. Oh, I love magic oh, art yeah. so much. Yeah, I love it. magic cards. We talk, oh yeah, we talked about this when we were because when we were in Seattle, the Museum of Pop Culture, they had like the whole Magic the Gathering. Yes, we did talk about this. Yeah, we, yeah. We had this conversation. I think I told you yeah. this exact story. So, yeah, you did, and I, then I think I might have said the same thing I'm about to say now, which is I have like ten thousand hours in Magic. I'm like a veteran of the game, so it, like I haven't played Arena though. Is there like the same rules and stuff? Like how does how does Arena oh, yeah. work? Lloyd? Arena's great. Arena's, it's, it's basically it's the, it's like a Hearthstone Magic Gathering. Yeah, yeah. They've it's organized it. Song? It's the same. It's the same rules, but it's just like it's a bit faster faced. Okay, I'd be yeah. down okay. to try Arena since I've never done I'd it. I'd try that. Um, oh, I'm so yeah. excited because I always want to play that, but I'm like, I need a couple of people who are also going through the experience. They're like, oh, I got this cool new card today. You know, I want to relive my mm -hmm. days, I guess, as a kid, where people are like, yeah. oh, I got this, rather than just me playing it on like ranked mode by myself and being like, fucking blue black control deck. <laughs> oh, bullshit. It's always blue deck. <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> yeah, 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 just yeah, like, yeah, the light. The lights are out. You got empty cans everywhere. Yeah, it's exactly. Control decks. Oh, this fucking just broken ass bullshit meta. fucking deck. <laughs> I, I, remember meta yeah. I remember talking to you, John, about playing like Yu-Gi-Oh at some point, and you basically told me all your decks were like Exodia and stuff. Like you just rinse through and do Exodia. I was like, okay, maybe not then, because you were like competitive, <laughs> weren't you? You were like a competitive player. I, yeah, 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 I got into, I think, Diamond Rank or something like that on Duel yeah, Links. Crazy. And then I was like, and then, then it started getting too much for me. They started doing like the XYZ and Chrono oh, shit. Oh, the Synchro, now. Synchro, synchro stuff. stuff? Yeah, Synchro stuff. And I was just like, eh. The fun's ruined now. Yeah. <laughs> I had yeah. Um, a disturbing moment recently where I saw like a Yu-Gi-Oh card, like a modern one. And I was like, were the cards always this small? And then I was like reading the like rules on the card, and I was like, "Fucking hell!" I've like, I feel like no, I need they... a magnifying glass for this. And I was like, "Am I old?" It's just no, like a boomer the, thing. The old the old cards used to have loads of text, like toon decks. They'd have loads of writing, but yeah. now it's like that's nothing in comparison to what modern cards have. Yeah, well, it's like. The reason they did that early on is, is because of Yu-Gi-Oh's refusal to use keywords or anything like that like Magic does, where they're just like, this card has trample, and you're like, ah, I know what trample is. Yu-Gi-Oh right. had nothing like that, so they had to explain every minute detail about every single mechanic that every card had. It was, yeah. And it left it, it, left it open to loopholes. Yeah. Like, a lot of the cards have to be rephrased now because they're so right. diabolical. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, and reading them is a chore sometimes now. I, I looked at some of those new ones, and I'm just like, how are you supposed to... Like, really, there was no simpler way to phrase this? It's like two straight paragraphs, no line I breaks, think, tiny I think font. Where, I think where Yu-Gi-Oh went wrong, if I was going to... You know how, like, back in the day, you used to feel <sighs> your so deck... Gary would fix it. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, like, back in the day when you used to play, there was, like, a lot of normal cards. They didn't have abilities, they just had an attack power and a defense. Yeah. And you just would summon it and then you would get like, you know, Dark Magician, seven stars, 2,500 attack, boom. That's all it is. Um, but now, like, yeah. everything's got to do something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I do miss like the special summon or ritual cards. summon. Or... No, the ritual summon suck. Well, Don't like, use those. <laughs> they're, is, they're rubbish. This is what I mean by like, you, you go, it's just like a badly designed card game. It's like early on, they had tons of those normal monsters and they were shit. It was like Skull Servant, 300 attack, 200 defense. Who the fuck would ever use this? Nobody. It sucks. It's a trash card. And they had tons of trash cards like that. Yeah, scary. I know. But who in their right mind would use it? I'll, let me rephrase. Um, but then they had, they had tons of like, you know, just like, this card is 600 attack and 400 defense. And it was like, no one's ever going to use this shit. And then they went too far the other way where they were just like, there's no more normal cards now. Everything does something. And th what they needed was to be somewhere in the middle. Hmm. Yeah, you need but, a balance, yeah, of some oh, well. kinds. I agree. Yeah, it's a purely, it's a purely, like, 
planned out card game. Like, there's some yes. things about Yu-Gi-Oh that I do like, don't get me wrong, but I agree with you, John, where, like, too many of the Magic and Trap cards, there's, like, not really a cost to them, so it's just, like... Yeah, it's too many like effects bouncing off each other all the time, and it just got a little ridiculous after a while. You need that I, kind of like some cards are more simple, and some cards you make your deck around, and then you work it I, out. I think some of the issues were like so. You mentioned Skull Sermon. I think that was a three star, like a level three card or something. The I levels, think it was level one was it level one. Yeah. Like the level thing didn't matter enough because like right. four one star four. you could summon for the same cost as a one star. Yeah, exactly. And it was dumb. Exactly. Like, yeah. There's I mean, no honestly, who, who would ever who would ever bring Dark Magician when you could bring Blue Eyes? You would have five hundred more attack for the same cost of getting out. You know, right? That that was a real issue. Like, well, you, and they, yeah, and they got to the point where they had four four star cards with twenty three hundred attack, like very yeah. quickly. And then it was like, now you really don't want to play Dark Magician. Yeah. But anyway. power creep. Yeah, power creep, and it happened in like four expansions. They had <laughs> like Summon stuff. Skull was level six for two thousand five hundred attack. Yeah. But he Ridiculous. had less defense. He had less defense. I know, you, can. But you never, you never like voluntarily put anything in defense mode, so it didn't yeah. matter. Yeah. <laughs> they should like labyrinth or something. That yeah, yeah. If you had some kind of like cyber jar, or morphing jar, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I feel like we're alienating the non Yu Gi Oh audience Probably, yep, right yep, now. Yep, yep, it's sorry. okay. No, you guys go off. I can tell you're passionate about your twenty five hundred shekels or whatever you were saying earlier with the cards and defense shackles. or whatnot. Uh, defense and offense and defense. Yeah, I like. How was, um, how, how was your week, Sino? <laughs> like, we, we're moving on. From... That was that was from that's that was Sonic. <laughs> yeah, I just mentioned that I played Sonic, which was fun. It was a little nostalgia it moment. Was, it was cool that you guys brought Pokemon up after because I also played Pokemon Unite this week. Oh, how's stuff. that looking? Oh man, dude, it's. I think it's gonna blow up. Like it's, <laughs> it's. I'm serious, man. I'm maybe not on Twitch or anything, but there's like people are like they're doing like. Turn like Luminosity did like a big money tournament and like people oh, were playing yeah. and they they added they added a bunch of uh like a bunch of like draft modes to to rank at masters level and like they're they got a new two new Pokemon have come out since the last time I brought it up on the podcast uh, Gyarados and then I told you Gary the name of the other one um, but I can't remember the name now um, you hmm. hadn't heard of it the one I told oh, you I don't know. I'm so not gonna remember it then so they have so yeah, Gyarados yeah. in the game now. Yeah, starts out as Magikarp, turns into Gyarados. Oh my god. Oh, my god. I bet, oh, I want to play that so badly. It's so what, cool, bro. Why did it take them, like, three years to add Gyarados to the game? I don't what know. What the hell? Instead, we've got fucking Clefki or whatever in the game. Is Clefki in? Clefable? Oh, no, no, no. Know. There's a keychain Clef... Pokemon. There's, isn't there some, there's some dinky little Pokemon like that, though, that The they ice cream one? There. Is that no, in I don't think so. Chandelure is in. It's about comfy. I'm looking at a list like comfy, I like comfy is like a comfy's a little weirdo. Comfy, yeah, they got fucking yeah, comfy in there. Weird. He's a little weirdo. <laughs> which one's, which one's little, comfy? Comfy like attaches it's, to people and there's a support and like heals. It's like a flower lay. This little flower oh, thing. It's oh, okay, a circle, I think I'm dude, man. Yeah. Yeah. But no Gyarados. Come on. At least they, at least they finally added them. They righted their wrongs. He's there now. So yeah, pretty sweet. That's really cool the way it works. Yeah. One of my fondest content creator memories and it sounds like such a narcissistic point because it's basically a kind of me is me freaking out when we were playing pokemon unite john do you remember you made that video yes. where i picked the wrong pokemon at the yeah. last minute and i'm like freaking out <laughs> just yes, like shouting yeah. no because we had like a bad team call really but tough? i'm just like what the fuck and that fucking sucks and i'm like taking pokemon yeah. unite very seriously yeah, yeah you accidentally picked wigglytuff when we needed like a damage dealer like you wanted uh, Cinderace is what you wanted, oh, but like crap. It, it was like it, like you were trying to switch to them like at the last minute or something like that, and it just, it just started wigging out like it got yeah, overloaded the or something. Switch could handle it. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's still really it's still the performance. It still struggles during like selection. Like I literally played the game like I said yesterday, and it like yeah. it doesn't wig out like it did at launch. You remember I was really bad at launch. Now it's still it still like lags though on select screen. Like as you're cycling through Pokemon, so I've definitely selected the wrong Pokemon on accident because of the lag in the selection screen. So that's funny. Oh, I miss playing Cramorant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cramorant was I miss playing so games with you, Gary. Yeah. Can we do that? Can we, maybe? Maybe I, oh, I. I picked out the book club game, but I could always call an audible and we could just play Pokemon Unite because that might be kind of fun. 
Hmm. I would I mean, definitely not say no to Pokemon Unite. They have added like 40 Pokemon since I start, stopped well, playing, he, by the way. Umbreon's in now, right? I said that Umbreon. Yes. Umbreon. Um, Umbreon, yeah. Umbreon's like S plus tier tag, man. S plus tier top laner. Like super, super cracked, bro. Ooh. Are they all in there? Are all the okay. evolutions in? Alright, no. I'm gonna have to think. I don't think Flareon think. is. They didn't put Flareon no. in? No, I don't Sylveon, think, I don't think Sylveon, they have Flareon. Leafeon, uh, Umbreon, off the, top of my off the top of my head. They got Espeon yeah, too. Yep. Bloody Glaceon. Glaceon's in, but not Flareon. Oh my guys, the, the, game's, the game's in constant development, bro. I'm sure they'll all make it. They'll all get there in time. Where's They're Bellsprout? Making... Oh my god, Gary. Bellsprout, isn't Bellsprout one of the, uh, I think it's an NPC, actually. I think, yeah, jungle no, monster. Like a jungle right? creep that you kill. No, yeah. Yeah. no, no. Yeah, no. sorry, you Gary. Execute it. You execute shattered. it for, for extra experience, Gary. I'm sorry. Gary, if <laughs> your favorite Pokemon's going to be a jobber, expect it to fulfill <laughs> jobber roles in the Pokemon universe. Yeah. I'm sorry, okay? Yeah, it's just the way it's going to be. You can squish and grind under your heel. That's what it's going to yeah. be. I hope there's some Growlithe so I can kill in an Arcanine as well. <gasps> do it. Do I do want Arcanine jump. to be in the game, though. I sincerely... At least Bellsprout's in the game. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I think I care about this less than you, so... Doug, I'll just what's your favorite you Pokemon? Win. My favorite Pokemon? Yeah. Like, okay. Uh, I know John's is Arcanine, so knows is Gengar, mine's Bellsprout, what's yours? Gengar is really good. Um, Thank you, I deserve I would that. Prom you do. I would probably say... Man, that's hard. Buzzwool. Um, no, do you, do you know no. I, do, do you know <laughs> I could see I, your favorite, Doug? I could see you liking Onyx. I don't, I don't know, know what Onyx is. I don't even know what Onyx is. I the really like Snorlax. It's just I a like giant Snorlax rock snake. A lot. Yeah, it's just a rock snake. I like Snorlax a lot. Uh, I like Slowbro a lot. Um, Slowbro makes sense. I really like. Yeah. What's the other dude? Um, Gary. Crussell. Blissey is really funny. It's kind of adorable. Yeah. Oh, Blissey is a good choice. I like Blissey a lot. Tyranitar. Um, Tyranitar is cool. Very cool. I want to play Tyranitar. I don't know, man. I don't know. I think that, like, I know. Tyranitar yeah. and Pokemon What's Unite. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I know. I saw him yeah. on there and I was like, I got to play that guy because I love Tyranitar. A apparently, Tyranitar is like the character to solo rank up with. Like, they're very good at like carrying and ranking up solo. I got that from like the top Pokemon Unite content creator. Like, he does a oh. podcast and everything. He's really, really good. He's. <laughs> He's on YouTube and Twitch. He like multi streams, and he's really he's really dope. I actually like him a lot. Um, but he's he was talking about like within the last month or so, I saw him talking about how like Tyranitar is who you want to play if you want to like grind rank alone, solo. We're so. in we're in like a gaming environment now where like certain games are so entrenched in like a genre that it's like really hard for new games to survive, right? So like mobiles, yeah. Heroes of the Storm dying is like still a shock to me because there were so many things about it that were great, but it just kind of got muscled out. <laughs> So it's kind of cool when no. you see. I know, I know, I know. I'm, I, I got something to say, but go on. It's it's a painful memory for you lads. I I agree, but it's kind of cool <laughs> to see. That wasn't a dig. Wow. It, it was kind of it sounded very. It was kind of. It was kind of. It was kind of cunty. It's not a dig. It was kind of. It was at least about it or whatever. It was at least a little. It was at least a little cunty. Be it, admit it. A little. This is a problem I have. Anybody watching out there? It's dead. Sorry, lads. <laughs> when I'm trying to be sincere, people think I'm being a cunt. It. No, it's a little cunty, not a lot of cunty. I like, I like how I my little, just always little... like twenty percent cunty. Sorry, I can't turn I, off. I like the your you know, Did you guys know? Got like attacked. My little cunty thing went under the radar completely. <laughs> that's is your a lot of cunty. Always. It's like <laughs> that's, that's the thing. That's that's your baseline. So <laughs> no, did you guys know that when when Heroes of the Storm got shut down, it was like profitable. Like there was no reason to shut it down. Like the game was doing I... well. The the pro circuit was doing well. They were getting like great views. They were getting great sponsors. Like they literally just shut it down because they didn't want to bother with it while they were trying to merge with Microsoft. It like I... they were making money on it. I, I have a theory. I believe I read somewhere because it's a Tencent that own League of Legends. It's them, right? They're like involved. Tencent own League of Legends? I thought Riot. Uh, right, Riot owns it. Ten Tencent are part, like, aren't they part of, like, don't they have shares in Riot? Ten Tencent, yes. like, pub, Tencent has like shares in almost any company, I feel like. Riot, was, days, so Riot was acquired in 2011 <laughs> by Tencent, but they hate yeah. that oh, quite well. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think I, then I, think I yeah. read somewhere that Tencent have a share in Blizzard as well. Well, they I did. I wouldn't be surprised. Tencent... Yeah. Well, they're also, everywhere. they have a share in Pokemon this, Unite as well. Yeah, this was, this was like a conspiracy thing that I, I read, basically, where I was like, someone was basically implying that maybe Blizzard were like, uh, maybe Tencent were like, stop competing oh. with 
us. Like, just, we're going to stop competing with ourselves. We want mm. this to be the the king. That's but then you maybe. But then if you are, if you have both games, then you already have those players. But I feel like Heroes of the Storm did not have as good a business model as League of Legends. If you could get those people onto mm. League of Legends, I guarantee there are a lot of people that quit Heroes of the Storm and didn't play League of Legends, though. I don't know. Oh yeah. I feel I like don't know, yeah. Play, it was just something I read online. Play. I was like, that's an interesting yeah, yeah, yeah. theory, I felt. I don't know how true it is. It is. I like a research. CEO was just like, we're gonna do this and that's it. Yeah. And they maybe didn't I've decided. think about it. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, that yeah. Could, be, could be a good point. You what guys, you guys always... oh, I don't... oh, I think it's good that it's always nice to see like a new online game become established and get like its own content yes. creators and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, <clears throat> it's so difficult nowadays. A lot of the heroes guys that were doing Twitch moved to Pokemon Unite. Like a lot of those guys are oh, streaming really? Unite now. Yeah, a lot of. I mean, I, I think it makes more sense than going to the heroes there. Yeah, well, because it's more. It's like kind of. Yeah, it's more Jason. Yeah, it's like more it, of a it, party. More of a party at MOBA. Like yeah, like it's a party was. MOBA exactly. Like yeah. heroes was yeah. Um, yeah, it will be a party MOBA when I start playing. What's funny? I will oh, crush. No, I will same, crush those eight year olds. Is it? Is it I was talking five. No. Dude, I was talking about yeah, it's five five. I was talking about that, like crushing eight year olds, and then people in chat were like, "Dude, no, um, these people that play these Pokemon games are like adults now, thirties. Like they're yeah. people, they're people that were into these, they were into Pokemon when they were kids, growing up and being sure. like, I'm still hooked on it, and so yeah, I don't think it's like as many kids as it is grown ups. And I mean, from what I understand, the voice chat in that game can get pretty savage with adult humans yelling at each other. So the dreaded I've never, Pokemon I've never adult done voice. Adult Pokemon fans. I've never done a voice, but <laughs> oh, F God, tier, just, F just tier. Sounds in, so funny to me. In the I really hope their insults humans. are all Pokemon themed. <laughs> yeah. Imagine, yeah. imagine fucking Zubat. Yeah. What the fuck is the Snorlax doing? Yeah, imagine rotate playing that game. Rotate, and you're like, Tyranitar. Can I get a gank, please? And a dog replies, <laughs> "Dude, I just gagged for you. What do you mean you want another gank, bro? You gotta wait." Are you a and then you get... child. Do you babysitter? <laughs> Do you need a rare candy? Oh. Do you need a rare no, candy? No, no, you feel sorry for yourself? I want a quick battle? circle. I want a quick circle back to Heroes of the Storm and just let you guys know that, like, I know you guys tease me all the time about the VHS era where I was like, it's coming back, boys. And, like, you still tease me about other games that I play. And I'm like, it's coming back. And you guys are like, oh, stupid Doug. There is a huge contingent of it's coming back, guys, in Heroes of the Storm. There are I mean, people I, out there that are continually being like, okay, so in this last press release that they released, there's like kind of a hint that maybe they were going to touch on heroes. And like the last two BlizzCons, there's been like rumors leading up that they were going to announce like a rebirth Heroes of the Storm. So I think, I think deep out there. Heroes is probably a little bit like the Bloodborne remaster, you know? People really want it to happen. I'm well, there's one sure. PC port for Bloodborne, but oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I suppose it's gone down now that I was like, oh, just give us something. Just, so just play, port it to PC. Let me just play the game again. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I'm, I would very much like them to bring Heroes back. I'd love yeah, it. I'd, I'd be down. Yeah, I think that's the, I, I, I relate to your, how you feel about a lot of other games, Doug. I feel the same about Heroes. Like, I... No, okay. So I could buy just, into well, rumors and be like, "Yes, please, please, yes, yeah, I want to believe." Yeah, I want to believe. I'm, I'm I've been playing the, the a lot of like. Thing again. I could buy into rumors. <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing that a lot of League that. of Legends lately, but you know, even though I've, I'm really enjoying it, but there are some heroes from Heroes of the Storm that I'm like, "There's no equivalent in League of Legends." Like, I love playing Li Ming in Heroes of the Storm. She was one of my favorites to play. And You're there's no well. champion that, that is like her in League of Legends. There's nothing that is the same type of style that she has. And the Lost Vikings. Too bad. Yeah, there's nothing There's nothing like Lost Vikings or Shogal or Abathur. Well, no. Abathur, there's, there's kind of Yumi a little bit, but... Oh, Yumi's... Um, a, yeah, I like Yumi. Is Yumi the, the one that the, attaches to people? Yeah, the stupid yeah. fucking cat. But, like, it doesn't, it doesn't have that... It doesn't have that map management stuff that Abathur was really fun with, where you could, no. you know... When someone's running out from a chase, they, they're, they're trying to back out of a fight and they walk into your minds and die. Funny yeah. shit. Best, yeah, best. Yeah. yeah. Or when you out would backdoor their forts, they'd yeah, be I mean, like Heroes... pushing and then they come back and be like, their, their base was like under siege. Heroes of the Storm had so many unique mechanics, like Murky's egg that he could uh, respawn yeah. from, or Abathur going into like a little egg behind enemy lines, but you could go back and snipe him if you were sneaky enough. Like, there were so many interesting, or Cho'Gal, where two players could play the same oh, character. So good. Did you All guys sorts ever of experimentation play... that never happens in League. Did you guys ever play like the last character? Was the dragon? Um, 
Oh, oh um, Alex Deathwing. Alex Deathwing. 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 No, Deathwing. Uh, yeah, Deathwing. Did Deathwing, you guys yeah. ever? Did you guys ever play with or against Deathwing? Yes. Yeah. I. I. I you could. Deathwing was really strong early game, but then like, I. I would lost Vikings that thing down on my own like late game. Oh, for real. Yeah, like I caught one. Like you know, when you do the little jump as the Vikings. <clears throat> I caught one. He couldn't get away. <laughs> I just oh murdered God. him. Kept spinning to win. Oh, it felt good. Yeah, was this I, against I AI, like... Gary? No, no, a real player. <laughs> just there's a, there's a John diss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I miss heroes. Oh. I... And the maps were so cool. The objectives on every the map. The maps were really cool. Yeah. Well, Everything. I will say that was kind of a double edged sword because I liked some of the maps and then some of the other ones I just fucking hated. I didn't like the ghost ship. Blackheart's one. Bay. Blackheart's yeah, Bay was so Black fucking Hearts garbage. Bay was Delete the it worst. forever, dude. Never a good game there. Never but a the Sky no. Temple. Lose. Sky Temple. No, was happy. Sky Temple Sky was, Temple was fun. flames. That's like the best. Um, Garden of Terror was another bad one. God, yeah, they turned that one off. They turned that one off for a long time. They did. They, yeah. they nice. reworked it. I'm not they sure they they reworked it. it. Yeah. yeah, they reworked it and made it like not unplayable, but not it still sucked. Bad. Like it wasn't mm -hmm. it wasn't fun, but it was like better than before. Um what was the the best map? I I really liked the two lane map. What was the one that was like the StarCrafty map? Um, oh, yeah. The one with the nukes. Right? No, the oh, nukes no, was that the was big a good map. one though. That, that, that was, was like a the good last map. map. That was a really another really Do you mean the Diablo maps? With the, with no, the two things not, fight not in the, the eternal, not the not the championship of the eternal or whatever. I'm talking about the um, it was like the the swarm one. It was like two lanes. Oh and yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you would send all these uh, you send the swarm come out the yeah, doors. Send, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. I can't remember the name of the map. It had yeah, was... it had um, who's the dude with the, with the, with now. The, who's the dude with the big turret gun? Tychus. Tychus was in the, yeah. the, the image, the loaded image. Yeah. Um... I always remember, I was, like, if, if loaded into a two-lane map and I'd be playing Lost Vikings, I'd be like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. oh, my, my crib's are nice. <laughs> I'm screwed. I think, I think my favorites to play on, just balance-wise, were Sky Temple and Tomb of the Spider Queen. I really liked. Spider, oh, Spider Queen was Queen. so fun. Spider Queen was um, so good. It was a great map, but that was a map where, where like, if you had a, a really bad, like, lane, like, one bad laner that couldn't, that, like, yeah, got behind, true. it was like you were screwed, so... That true, was a hard true. one to, to play like in solo or play in like ranked when you weren't with at least a good strong duo. I feel like that game, that map was like tough. But it was, like, to get, was my when you had a five item. stack, it was so good. We need to get 10 people together and play Heroes of the Storm in a custom match. You know, they're still playing. There's still a player base. Is that community? Yeah, I know, like but I don't want to play against the sweaty fucking nerds that have been playing yeah. nonstop for the past well, we, yeah, they, seven didn't years. We, didn't, we, didn't we try playing it a few years ago? There's the game. Yeah. Bro. We go, and it was just, we just got. Demolished. Yeah, it was, it was just like, skill so skill out. Issue, bro. You, you gotta, you gotta get, you gotta dig deep. Yeah, but like, I don't want to spend, I don't like want to spend five life. hours being shit and having a terrible time just and go. Okay, now I can play the game again. Well, I'd rather I, be good at, at a game that's actually alive than be good at a dead game. God, we're all being cunty today. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, I mean, I, I like Heroes of <laughs> no, the Storm, I, but if I Blizzard doesn't want to keep up with it, then I'm not going to keep up with it. Yeah, I, I'm going to play Devil's Advocate and say that wasn't a cunty thing. He's just being real. Like that's true. Like the amount of effort it would take for us to get in and like be able to play with people in the public, like it's probably because you go into Friday the Thirteenth, right? There's still people playing that game, but it's a party game, so it doesn't fucking matter. But like a, a game like Blizzard or Heroes, that's actually kind of balanced. Like it's gonna take like work. I'm yeah. still on my like, decades long exist. goal to get semi decent at League of Legends. <laughs> at the moment, right. never mind anything yeah. else, and that's not going well for me. By the way, you were talking about Brexit holdout. Thank you. Oh, that was right. Right. Thank you. Oh, I love that map. Thank you. Thank you. How are you at League at this point? What's your rank in League right now? I'm only Silver the... 4. And John, but Silver you're... Silver's John, different now. Ranking? Once they added Iron, it's like, like Bronze and Silver are like better now comparatively than they used to be yeah. before Iron was a thing. So now Silver 4 feels a bit like I'm getting close to like what Gold used to be, if that makes right. sense, where people know kind of what they're doing a little bit more. I mean, obviously, it's still low tier. I'm sure, I'm sure there's like a million people who play League that are like, pff, silver, pff, low tier. But yeah, obviously. Yeah. But, yeah, but I just want like good games in League. I want games where I don't feel like I'm playing with people who have like emotional constipation, where like one bad thing happens and they like freak out and then they start like throwing out slurs. Do you know what I mean? Right. You want to play? Yeah. You want to play out of the DVD league and into like people that play competitive games and are good yeah. at them, right? So they just don't get mad every time anything is hard, right? Like yeah. I don't have to I win like every that. game, but like I want to play in a league where somebody understands that if you get killed twice in lane, you can play conservatively and maybe come back later. 
rather than mm-hmm. like I lost a duel at like four minutes in so now I'm going to completely shit the bed. I'm going to talk in all chat the whole time. I'm going to say things that definitely are not godly, not not Christian, not godly, very, very dark-sided things. And then we're going to have to give up at like 15 minutes because they've shat the bed because they're upset because they lost one jewel. You know? Yeah. yeah. People yeah. who need therapy desperately or I don't know. People who need to take a break. A like, they, they need just to I chill. think the whole touch grass thing, but sometimes go for a walk. Well, the game yeah. the game's been out for what, like fourteen years or something like that. Like it's been around around for a long there, time, yeah. Right? yeah. I'm still so, bad at it. And I just think that a lot of people like they some people just pick a game and that's the game they play and they like just never improve and they just just get madder and madder and like more ingrained and entrenched in a game. Like, well, I, I mean, I think that might be something to do with like gaming addiction. Yeah, like, I I think like League and DVD and these kind of games they. It's not just a game you play all the time. It's also a game you can play with your friends. Uh, mm-hmm. So it becomes part of your social network and then your yeah. entertainment. Obviously, people watch League, people watch DVD. So it becomes like you become part of other communities and it just kind of becomes all-encompassing. And so like taking a step back from the game becomes more difficult. Almost impossible at times, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I think gaming addiction is like a real, a real thing that I think people yeah, need to be more you... aware of. Like if you find yourself not enjoying a video game, you need to ask why you're playing it so much. Because yeah. I need to be good at it. But, yeah, you know, that's, that's the way well, I mean, At least, at least in league, you, you to, actually like... can be, right? You know? well, that's, that's fair, yeah. No, yeah. I, I continue to love League, but yeah. I, I enjoy it. I, when you're that deep into something, it's important to remember that the passion is great, but it can also negatively impact you in a way that's like, what am I doing? Why am I... Why am I mm-hmm. sitting here feeling like shit about playing a game of League when it wasn't even that big a deal? It's not like I'm playing it in a tournament. Mm, because right. yeah. I got ganked by a Chaco who went invisible and then I got angry and then I started arguing with my team and it's just like, why am I choosing to spend my time in the earth doing that? It's, super, I, it's fun, you know, it should be fun. I also have a theory why people get so angry about it as well. And I think it's because video games are really good at like developing a feeling of flow. So you can, you know, become very immersed in your environment when you're like just, you know, reacting to your opponent's movements and stuff like that. And then as soon as you die in that, the immersion breaks and you, rem- you remember you're playing a game. And then that form of escapism is destroyed. And I think that is quite a frustrating, deflating feeling. Yeah, although I I love it. I love that feeling of like there's a narrative each match. So like mm. some games, some games I totally <clears throat> fucking suck at the beginning. Like champions really weak. They were playing a champion that like counters mine, and then it's like I'm gonna be careful about it. I'm gonna stick under tower, and then gradually the pieces fall in place. We had a good fight around the dragon pit. Oh, I got some side lanes, farmed up some gold, and all of a sudden rah, rah, I'm like a dog. I'm like. Rah, rah, rah. Just like a, I get one or two like key kills and then it's just like, ooh, it's the comeback, bitches. And then we take it's Baron and then we win the game and I'm just like, all I had to do was be wild. patient. And then yeah. the, the virtual <laughs> crowd goes wild. Everyone claps. You, know, you, know, you press, you press the button on your stream deck of the cheering. Yeah, yeah. Just quietly Sino, to myself. Sino's li- living out his own late 90s like kids like, movies, underdog story, like some <laughs> yeah. Airbud shit going on where it's like, we won the big game, guys. Yeah, absolutely. Like, 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 like a, did it. There's a commentate in the background like, Shadow Beats has done it! The MVP <laughs> once again! The haters said he couldn't do it, but he proved them wrong! They said Lissandra was a B tier pick, but not when it's a Sinnoh playing it! I think what we see tonight, Tom, it. is that Lissandra is S tier when he's in the hands of Sinnoh Beats! He was always right! <laughs> we just didn't have the eyes to see! <laughs> this is gonna usher in a new meta! Anyway, exactly. I'm just, I'm and then so I go to bed right now, you guys. I'm just so emotional. That's why I love it, and I I love that feeling because in mobiles you can do it with friends as well. Where like yeah. if somebody's like struggling in lane, and then you help get a gank and you help bring them back. I feel mm-hmm. like I'm on the front lines with the lads, and it's just like I got you, soldier. Yeah. Don't worry about this. You can feed. I, you can get some gold, and it, soldier. And it is like that. It is like that. You build that camaraderie when like you work together. Like when we used to play uh, Rainbow Six Age. And we'd work together and do something like really oh, well yeah. and effective and communication. We'd, we'd get, have like we'd win. We'd do like a sting worked. operation where we'd take yeah. them from different angles. Yeah, yeah, and like people, it always feel amazing. Like their personality lends itself to certain play styles. So like some people are really good at being sneaky. Some people go Rambo or something like that. So oh it's my like, god, playing it's very playing, personal. Yeah, playing Rainbow Six just... Siege with Max. I'm just like. <laughs> Okay, there's a guy around the corner. I think I see exactly where he is. I'm gonna load up my flash grenade and I'm gonna and Max will just go in there and just He's out the window. He's dead. 
don't have to worry about him anymore. And I was like, I had this whole plan that I developed like 45 seconds <laughs> worth of planning. I'll never anyway. forget watching Max jump out of a window in front of me. And I was like, oh, there's somebody around the corner here. He's like, I'm going in. And he jumped out <laughs> of the window and he somehow went around the corner and killed three people. And I was like reloading and like peeking around the corner. Yeah, I was like, okay, that. so I guess we've won this round. He was just like, yeah, they were dog shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, he always does that shit. I was like, I'm glad that, you're on my team. He does that in Fortnite too. And it's I remember, funny I because say, like, I remember that with Fortnite. Yeah, he's very aggressive. Like, like I'll be, I'll be with the other teammates. Like, usually just Justin, but we'll just be like looting and in town, and they'll be like. Where's Max? And then we'll be like, he's way over there. And Max will be like, there's a whole team here. There's a whole team. I'm dead. I'm dead. They're, they're all dead. I killed them all. <laughs> just covered in blood. Yeah. And I'm he's just fine. like, well, <laughs> he doesn't even need us to be with him. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, MOBA's that's what, fun. That's what I like about yeah. Hunt as well. I love Hunt. That's got that similar kind of vibe. Where yeah, sometimes Hunt, you're being Hunt's chaotic great. and just like running in there was one time i was uh, not too long ago i was playing with was i playing with you as well doug it's tally and i think you and we got to the objective point and they were just finishing ban they just started to banish so we just ran in and gunned yeah. people i think it was a little while ago but like we yeah, just no, ran in immediately ever, caught them all off guard because well, they don't yeah because the they're not prepared way. they just got they yeah. just banished so it's noisy and they don't hear us coming and gary's got a shotgun and it's <laughs> i do love bad a shotgun news for them. bad news for them i'll always pay more to take a crown and king Oh, what a shotgun. What a treat that gun is. That's what Rapid you fire shotgun. <laughs> what man, a treat. Forever. This man's been rich since the day I first day I ever played it with you. You've been rich, man. Yeah, I, I, I love like doing uh, dual pistols in that game. I don't know why. If, anytime yeah. I don't have dual pistols, I, I perform noticeably worse. <laughs> the, new, the new season's just started, I think, actually. New I haven't event, checked out yeah. what the event is yet. Yeah. You're a hunt partner. Uh, Doug, what's the, what's the new event? Okay, so I the new, don't the know. New, the new, no, I know. Yeah, I mean, I haven't played it yet, but I do know. About no. it. There's like the new event is like so. There's like a some sort of spawn on the map that like you can loot it and get like really good and good gear or something. But like it's basically like a, a new point to force people to fight. Basically, oh, okay. it's some some sort of like I don't know if it's an objective and gives you a buff or whatever. But everybody, it's a, a point kind of similar to the 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 blue boxes in Fortnite where like people will come to them, right? Box, the drops oh, or the ones that drop down from the sky. It's a drop. It's a drop in game on hunt that basically encourages people to <clears throat> PvP. Um, it's been pretty sweet. Looking so far, I watched these streams. I haven't played it yet. I'll probably try it this weekend. I don't know nice. what would make me go after that instead of like, is there an RPG in it? I don't recall what the actual <laughs> yeah, the draw is. But. Exactly, lads. I am loving this conversation, but we should probably move on to book club because it's been quite a lot of. Chat yeah, already. Oh we shit! Have, sorry, uh, yeah. We're just oh, chatting yeah, away. We're just chatting away. Chatting away. Just chatting away. It's a good. Um, it's a good problem to have, though. That's for yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah. So this was uh, Sino's week or Sino's episode, rather, to <laughs> to pick the book club it's me. game, and it's me. you picked hypnospace outlaw which is a 2018 2019 um would you classify this as a puzzle game because that's kind of how it read yes. to me puzzle I, adventure I game kind of like a it's almost like a puzzle visual novel really adventure game type thing mm, yeah it's like an interactive visual novel but definitely it's all about kind of solving things to advance the plot for sure yeah you play as a uh kind of a retro internet hall monitor who is uh you're an enforcer who's checking up on all the denizens of a place called hypnospace which people access it's like a virtual town i guess collection of web pages where people who are wearing a headband while they sleep can access and you're trying to uh trawl around and make sure that everybody's abiding by the rules no copyright infringement no harassment no legal programs, nothing like that, and you can tattle on people, and that's Internet the basic, arc. basic concept. Yeah, yeah. I, I was inspired to have this as a game choice when I've seen quite a few tweets about this, and I feel the same way. And then John, you tweeted about it recently as well. Kind of missing the old internet compared to Web 2.0 for certain yeah. things. So Web 2.0, everything's aggregated on social media websites. So like you find content very quickly, hmm. but. We've kind of lost this feeling. I would describe it as we've lost this feeling of like cyberspace, of like you have to go to a certain part of the internet to find conversations about certain things. So yeah. 
having like a forum that's about one topic or <clears throat> you know having like a zone so in hypnospace outlaw they have like zones for different sorts of people so there's like the teen zone where the teens all go together and they make their own web pages or there's like the older like the boomer zone i can't remember what it's called it's like the ranch or something oh and valley something valley good time valley good time valley and it's like <clears throat> It was a lot easier on the old internet. You had to kind of like find these places. It's a bit like finding like a cool little bar or like a little restaurant where you would find a website and you'd be like, oh my God, I love this website where I can RP like I'm a character in like Dynasty Warriors or something like that. And it was like a little off by itself thing. But now content is just like, most of the internet is either shopping or it's on social media. So yeah. it's all just like kind of content, but it, the internet's gotten smaller. Yeah, it's gotten like more connected but smaller as opposed to you had to find these little places. And that's mm. part of the thing that I miss about the 90s internet. And Hypno Space Outlaw is all about this kind of cheesy hypno, uh, sorry, cheesy retro aesthetic from the 90s. There's lots of like little jingles and everything is really colorful, like an AOL music, CD ROM bro. kind of thing. The music yeah, in that game. Music, 10 out of 10. Yeah. yeah. Like the, like the I can't really believe game. how many tracks there were. Yeah. Oh, I was so impressed. So many. Yeah, there, there, and some impressed. of them were so good that when I was streaming it, I was like, am I going to get copyright claimed? Is this going to get muted in the VOD? This sounds like an actual song. Where's this come yeah. from? Yeah, I think I think like the developers and their, their friends made all the songs. Like, yeah. I think they're just for the game. I don't think that they... Oh, yeah, really... they are. Yeah, they're, they're all just for yeah. the game. Yeah, Because <sighs> I've got awesome. a bunch on my stream playlist now. Because they're on yeah. Spotify. <laughs> I get I I get Zane song stuck in my head like once a day at least like that's oh the seepage song yeah yeah, yeah. so it's like Lincoln yeah. Park the Lincoln the Park song yeah <laughs> Zane is a character who's 15 years old and he's like a little metalhead dipshit like a lot yeah. of 15 year old yeah. boys were back in the day so when you look at that page I think for a lot of us you're like oh my god I was like that when I was younger yeah. and you feel kind of like. He is a little arsehole, but you can't help but love him, right? Because you're yeah. like, oh, you're working it out, buddy, you know? You'll get yeah. there. Yeah. But I feel a lot of despair at the fact that his page auto plays that. It's called Seepage is the band that he likes. Mm. Yeah. And it's supposed to be like Linkin Park, and it's supposed to be like this kind of cheesy new metal thing. But I unironically really like that song. Oh, the song's great. Yeah. <laughs> it is. I mean, so the first good. time I heard it, the first time I heard it, I was like, oh, this is shit. And the second time I heard it, I was like, all right, you know, not so bad. The third time, fourth time, fifth time, for for eventually I got there. I was like, <laughs> 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 yeah. so I'm gonna want about something. <laughs> <laughs> it's very like that. I was like, shit. I would have listened to that when I was a teenager, and I still quick, kind of listen to it. Quick question for you guys: Chowderman versus Seepage. Who wins? Chowderman. Chowderman. Thousand percent. <laughs> I have to go. I have Chowder to go. Man, Chowder, Chowder Man. Man. I have to go. Chowder Man too. Hall of Fame mm. level musician. That song. Yeah, true. That was His my. That was the was first just... note. The first note I made on my notes was motherfucking Chowder Man. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> I am the Chowder Man. Yeah, that was so good. So All many songs tracks good. too. Yeah, so, so many, many tracks. tracks dude. Yeah. God. The Squishers rap was pretty good though. Squishers are really <laughs> cool. The Chowder Man does that one too. Squishers yeah, does. are so much fun. So yeah, good. that was like stuck in my head. It's stuck in my head right now. The Squishers being a, a parody of Pokemon, basically. Did everyone find all of the 10 Squishers? Uh, I did. I found all 10. I found all 10. <gasps> I, that's one of the things I wanted to go back and do. Damn it. I should have done that. Were, was, like, I, was like, I, was, I was like refusing to move forwards until I found them all. No, yeah, I, I, I moved all. forward just thinking I would naturally find them. And then I was like, I only have like four. And then I went back. They're they're like all on Counselor Ronnie's page. Yes, like all yeah. the ones I was missing. I was just like, oh my god, here they all are. There were like two on one page. Yeah. He's been hoarding all them. Counselor Ronnie reporting for duty. Oh, that's so <laughs> duty. Good. D -d 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 duty. Such a good parody of like anti drugs PSAs oh, yeah. for teens. Drugs aren't cool. Don't take them or whatever he says. I can't remember. <laughs> I just love yeah, the the, the vo all the voice acting was fucking phenomenal just like so cliche 90s like you said like the the psa the, the council of ronnie like, it's just, <laughs> yeah. we all heard that same shit when we were in high school right like, seriously it, yeah it's it, so it perfectly encapsulated like 1999 which yeah. i think of all the of all the years in the 90s i feel like 1999 has a very specific yeah. aesthetic because it it's really like does. early early internet like 1998 yeah. was like a little too early 99 though like they they nailed it yeah. I loved, I loved that the game had like that Millennium Bug 
element to it yeah. as well. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. yeah that's that's part of the aesthetic of the 1999. Yeah. 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 Just, I don't know. The, the, the paranoia. Like, the shitty microphones. Like, it's always such a shitty <laughs> yeah. quality recording. Like, you're just like, oh. I, lo- I loved, like, the uh, the voiceover at the start. Yeah, was, the like, tutorial voiceover. The and then as there's a voiceover the guy into the microphone. Yeah, and then so like, then you want to do the it's impressive to go to the main one. <laughs> so, okay. And during one of the takes, like he finishes, and there's a guy in the background that's like, "That was good enough." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, next part, yeah. <laughs> the game was like, very funny takes. overall. Like the game was very funny. Yeah, um, I laughed out loud a lot. And all the mini games throughout it, um, I, I particularly liked the like the, the one we have to press the arrows to move around and pick up objects, and it's in the mall. And there's like the blender the that can kill place. you, yep. and like everything burgers. kills you in that game. Pick up yeah. money kills you. I know. I picked up the money. I was like, oh, I must use this to open to get a vending machine. No, it just murdered me. It's really yeah. easy once you figure it out, about, though. You're talking about Twilight Tiff's game. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yep. Where you have to get the hot dog, give it to the blender, use the yeah. grenade on the vacuum cleaner. That's the game. That's the entire game. <laughs> you die, I died so many I, times. There were so there were so many like little optional games you could do like that. Like, did you play Drug I, yeah. Runners? I played Drug Runners. Which one was Drug yeah. Runners? It's like, it was like the Chips Challenge style game where, like, you have to move around and avoid the guys offering you drugs. Oh, no, Suck. I think I missed that one. I didn't, I didn't beat it. I didn't beat it. Did you beat I it, I didn't John? beat it. I got, no. I got hearts. I got hearts like three or four levels in. Yeah, me too. I was like, how do you, yeah. you literally can't beat this. There might I be some kind of trick. Un- it, must be un- it must be unbeatable. They must have done that on purpose because it happened to both Nah, parts. it'll be beatable. Surely. I, I got know, to man. one point, and like I didn't spend I too much time on it, but I was like, I don't see how you get past this. Same. Like, there's, li- I'll, I'll, there's literally like two ways to go, and both times you got cut off. I mean, maybe exactly. Gary, maybe maybe Prince Gary can figure it out. I kind of want I to because I, I, I think said, I've missed a mini game. Is unbeatable. Yeah. Because I really yeah. liked it. I just I thought was, the game was great for that. Yeah, Council Ronnie cool. had like three different games you could get. Like, yeah, he had that brick game. He had drug runners. Yeah. It's crazy. It was um, yeah. It's very. I kind of view it almost a little bit like it's kind of like a Daria esque sometimes the way that they like parody well, six, stuff. Six Ad World. Yeah, kind of like Six Ad World. It's like that when Daria parody stuff, but like more silly. It's like they've taken it to a more extreme. It almost feels like Hypnospace Outlaw. The people who made it were originally like a comedy band, and then yeah. they were like, "What <laughs> if we made a game about the retro internet so we can have like silly little jingles that we could put in, and we could come up with dumb ideas that are funny, like the." The fake drugs that Counselor Ronnie's telling people not to do. It's like they're called T nubs. And when you take a T nub, it's called shonking. So it's like, don't shonk a T nub. And it's just like, just their <laughs> it's, word it's, choices. It's stick it, so stick up your ass, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, it's like a suppository. <laughs> if your friend tells you to put drugs in your mouth, don't do it. And by the way, if you're not a drug taker, nice one, man. It's all that <laughs> kind of like cheesy, over the top, right. 90s stuff. The war on which, drugs. It, like, this is your brain on pot or whatever it is oh you had the picture of the guy whose face had been edited where his eyes got giant and stuff oh yeah when he sh- he's shonking a t yeah when he's shonking you yeah. see his eyes get bigger and it's like don't do this, that man this guy's shonked <laughs> it's kind of like how we all used to act act pardon me before the internet was like a perpetual mirror of like making you feel cringe all the time yeah true so we, we didn't realize before it was how, shame yeah before, before we were constantly aware that there was people out there that thought we looked dumb. Yeah, it is we were true, cringe actually. yet free, you know. Yeah, it's definitely a comedy game, like you said. And then one thing that I noticed about it when I was playing is how, like, when I first started, because I went in completely blind. I'd never, and this is not. This is like if you could have picked out a not Doug style game, I think this one is probably like really up there in terms of mm. like. Like you said, like it's like a sto- It's all reading and like trying to sort through things and think a lot. And you know, I'm not a big thing. But um, I I was when I first started, I was very like apprehensive to do anything like downloading stuff and like yeah. installing installing yeah. things. I was like, oh, I don't want to fuck up and like ruin it. I didn't know what to expect. And then at a certain point, you start to realize like, oh, I'm just supposed to do all this shit. Like I just got to yeah. experience it all, and that's gonna keep the. I think the first time that I like got a virus and then I like pushed the story forward, I was like, wait, okay, I'm just supposed to always do everything. Yeah, and that's how you yeah. start through it. And then yeah. and then once I did that, it just like it opened up like a world that was really really funny. And really, yeah, this, I, I got there's that part where you have to download malware, yeah, the professor yeah. helper program, yeah, yeah, because yeah. I was the same way. I tried to avoid that for so long until I was yep. like, Wait, I think I've because there were some hints that, that I was supposed to do that, yeah, or that there was something with the professor helper program, and I was like, I guess I should download it, and yeah. then 
Yeah. It's like you, you like you track it being it's going to be a virus. Like you know, yeah. if you were on the internet in the nineties, this is going to be some malware. But then you're like, yeah. So I'm avoiding doing it. I'm at this certain point. I was like, well, I can't progress. So I'm assuming I'm just supposed to do this thing. And then I did it. And then it was really fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So as always, spoiler alert if you haven't played it yet. But um, to explain to the audience, as an enforcer, you're supposed to find different like rule breaking moments on Hypnospace, the internet, basically. So at the beginning, you're reporting things for copyright infringement, which I felt like such a narc for that. People would put up like a cartoon on their little web page, like, oh, my kids in my class drew uh, Gooper. Oh, I report and all I, those. Okay. Yeah, too. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, that's copyright infringement. Yeah, first no, what was your content today? What was your content? That, was, that yeah. was actually one of my favorite things, though, was when they were all like resisting it and pushing back so and everybody funny. was like oh, posting yeah. them on purpose. And, oh, like, the, dude, so the, the, all, the all so caps funny. dude. Who was the all caps dude that was like, you're not going to take away my freedom? Oh, the, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, it made it even more sense. I was like, and getting rid of that, getting rid of that, getting rid right. of that. Yeah. They get all American about it. They're like, this is an attack on my free speech. I'm posting yeah. Gooper. <laughs> yeah. So we stand with Gooper. We stand with Gooper. Yeah. Yeah, I report um, on all of those. Same. But eventually, <laughs> you, for instance, in the example you guys were talking about, Professor Helper, they're trying to find examples of like an illegitimate real world currency um, app, basically, on the web pages. But in order to discover that Professor Helper is trying to take money from people, you have to download the malware and get infected yourself before it gets to the point where it's like, to get rid of this, donate money with this link. And then that link is the thing that's against enforcement. So that's like kind of puzzle game element we were talking about, but I love the way that you kind of have to, to solve the crimes, you have to like participate in the internet. Do you know what I mean? You don't stay mm. safe, safe. You like, you download the virus on the family PC. You go on the web pages and you get like involved in like their little games and stuff and you download their programs. And then that's how you work out that like they're doing something. So I thought that was really well done. Did anyone download that like cheeky bit of malware like thing where you could get infinite money? Yeah, like, you could just print yeah. hypno credits. Oh no, yeah. I didn't get that. No. Yeah, you can just you just you put in like a like it, there's like a I think there's a note that goes put in a yeah. minus number into this and you do it's it. A, no, it no, no, gives... it tells you no, no, it tells you not to put a negative number in. So the first thing I did was put a negative number in to see what it did. Oh, that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, like, yeah, the the note said you're not yeah no negative numbers and I'm like okay so obviously negative numbers are going to trigger right. something. Yeah, and yeah. Then, so I just when you put a negative number in, it deposited that much into your account. Yeah, it goes went crazy. Cause I just put minus a bunch of nines. I was like, eh. same. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I, just blew up. I was like, I'm rich. Yeah. That program is it's like a parody of like the the video game trainer or like crack programs where like you load it up with a game and it allows right. you to change numbers in the game. But they have a button that's like donate to the hacks or Uber Leap overlords here. But if you put in a negative number, you're taking money away from them. That's how it works. Yeah, and then, then I get the antivirus. Yeah, that's what I, yeah. I wanted to buy the upgraded antivirus for so long. I was like, I can buy it now. Oh yeah, yeah I got, I I got I, Hypno Cure Pro. Yep, yeah. I use my, ha I use my hacker money for that too. Yep. <laughs> and I was like, finally. I I just I just uh, used all the money that I got for reporting first graders for copyright infringement. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys ever play janitor? Did you play janitor to make money? No, I didn't. No. I I got super hooked on janitor for a while. The one where you had to like drag all the stuff in and and quarantine it and then burn it. No, no I, I never saw that one. one. I, yeah, there's so much optional content I missed. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. it's. I'm sure, and I think that's one of those games that, like, playing through it. I think I only put like six or seven hours into the game to get through the story, but like, there's so much more stuff to go back and do. Like, yeah, I want to play. It like, again. there's a there's an you achievement. You mentioned two archive. games that I haven't played, and I want to. There's an achievement to archive everything, which apparently yeah. takes forever to do. Like, you have to literally because I mean, again, spoilers, but at the end, you're like on the, an archive oh. version of it, and you go through, and you have to like find all the old Holy websites shit. and archive them and there's an achievement for archiving 100 percent. like every page every everything you have to archive it so john and gary have you finished the game yes i haven't finished it but i'm like almost at the end like oh. i'm at the point where you're archiving and i'm just searching for uh proof that merchant soft was behind the crash gotcha okay. yeah that's right that's really it's really cleverly done too where it's like yeah Basically, Hypnospace goes down, but then people revive like an archive version of it all, so you can jump around the web pages, and that's how you get the hundred percent, like you were talking about, Doug. And I think even yeah. that is like very cleverly so written cool, into right? the plot. Very cool I, I, game. I really liked the uh, chapter transitions, like the one where, okay. where where it crashes, like you were talking yeah. about, but also the one like 
it happened for me like out of the blue. I like was really taken aback by it. Um, when Is you're when reporting you get... the 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 songs on Flist. Yes, yeah. And I was like, I was just like, I'm reporting all this shit, and I was just going <laughs> yeah. down the list. And then I got that email from Dylan that was just like, Oh, you think it's funny to report my uh my account, huh? <laughs> well, guess what? You're banned. And I was like. Oh, that was you? And I was like, whoa. Yeah. And then the computer yeah. started shutting down. And I was like, no, see, wait. No. I didn't, I didn't even, see the, I didn't even see the email. I was going through the list like going, banned, 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 banned. Money, please. Money, please. And then yeah. it just went, you're banned. Because I, like, you, I saw the email. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get to see the email. I was just like, oh I'm God. banned. Oh, yeah. What? <laughs> and then it kicked yeah. me out. I was like, what am I, I doing? Thank you for ignoring your email, Gary. Yeah, I yeah. always check my emails right well, away. I, I assumed it was just saying, you finished the case. I was like, I'll deal with that in a bit. Let me make some more money out of this first. Well, that's what you get then. Yeah. So again, to explain to the audience, one of the tasks you have to do is to report illegal sharing of music, very kind of Napster, old school type thing. And eventually, as you investigate, you discover a user who has like a hidden web page where you can just download all these songs. But when you report it, it turns out that the person who made Hypnospace is the one that has that web page, and he's the one that's doing it. So he's like not abiding by his own rules. And that's, yeah. a lot of him as a villain is basically he makes it and he thinks he's like a, a techno genius, but then he thinks he's above the rules that his own platform has. So yeah. he's like, why are you reporting me, dipshit? You're banned. And that's it's, like a whole thing. It's yeah. funny because I thought his brother was going to be the asshole. Yeah, yeah, I thought so too. I thought Adrian was going to be the problem. Yeah, like he was going to take I, all the credit for Dylan's hard work or something. That was the read I got early on, but I just, that's I just not what happened. I just needed to see Dylan's profile picture. I knew he was the fucking villain. All right. No, nope. I'm like, that guy, that guy's not, he's not. And then when the one girl that was like, oh, my, my awesome boss, Dylan, I'm like, nah, Dylan's the bad guy. Dylan's the villain. Dylan even <laughs> Dylan rhymes the villain. villain, bro. I knew he was the villain. No, it's I don't mean name. To, I always knew it. I always knew I mean, it. I knew. His I knew. name is Dylan, so that was red flag predict- number one, right? I, I, pre- I predicted it was Dylan. Um, I predicted it. John, did you make it to the part in in Endgame where you have to find you find like the lost the lost hip hop music from like the Fury guy or the Tyson? Yes. I can't remember the guy's name. Did you hear the songs? Did you hear the song? The like the I lost did. ones. I did the that Kev shit? J stuff. Yeah, Kev J. That's the one. I was saying yeah. Fury for some reason. I didn't get credit for it. Like I downloaded those songs. That was the last thing I did the, actually. The and bad, did you download the bad it. ones or the tribute ones? Because I originally downloaded the tribute ones and they didn't count. And then I had to. You had to actually find like the ones that were like. They were so bad. Like you, you would know if you found the right ones. Oh, like they're okay. Because like, I, I downloaded the two that were on page. The good his page. ones, right? The ones okay. that are like good. Yeah. Okay. You gotta yeah. find the bad ones. The ones that are like him just talking to a microphone with like yeah, no background music, and they're oh, really bad. Oh, okay. Like, they're really awkward. They're awesome. They're, <laughs> okay. They're the kind okay, of music so that I, I would have made. Like they're oh okay. Yeah. No, I got confused I about do... that part too. I did do that whole Egyptian eye thing, and that was like a lot of work for nothing. Egyptian eye thing? Do you mean like the yeah, you have to the, download on the god stuff? The god stuff. No, like, they, 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 they like is, freaking is out. Is that like the, the, the third eye when you can like see the stuff that's not you know, like, like the hidden stuff on the page? Is that really yeah, you mean the yeah, eye yeah. cult? Oh, get yeah, that! Oh, right. And like, then you yeah. finally get into the eye of Horus uh, fan page or whatever, and it's like nothing. The Children of Horus? I think that's one of the requests you get at the end. Yeah, it's it's the one that Chelsea gives you. Right, uh-huh. And you, you do need to do those, but that one is like quite difficult compared to the other ones. It's, where it's like, find the I, music. Like, I, I had to, say, I, I had to like go all around to all these different, to like all of Tim's little fucking pages <laughs> with the all-seeing eye out and be like, where's the password? Like scrolling through these yeah. long pages and then I finally was like yes I got the password I can go into Children of Horus now and then I got in there and then it was like I mean I don't want to spoil it I guess but it's just it, it was not I was like that's it <laughs> that was a lot of work uh, Horus stands for hiding occult references in utmost secrecy yes, so it's yes very like conspiracy theory type stuff but yeah I feel like that one's more like completionist as a goal yeah. as opposed to like something you have to do there, I did I feel like towards to the end do. especially I would like solve things and then be staring at nothing mm. like, what I, like what do i do? like i don't know the pieces i will say the end i was struggling towards the end i was like i did start to have to look up stuff in the you, archival you, phase of the game did you use the hint page at all there's a hint page if you type hint in because I, I at one point i was stuck i forget what i think i was 
I forget where I was stuck, but I had to Google. I was like, I need help. And it just went, one of the Steam comments was, type in hint. Oh my and god, so you, I search, never did you that. search hint mm-hmm. and the game gives you and it gives you like easy hints, then medium hints, then you can ask for like yep. extreme hints. What? But I love that. Yeah. I love that. Like, yeah, I thought it was really cool. And I kind of yep, tried to I stick to the hints. easy hints. Yeah. I, I didn't want to use the extreme ones because apparently I saw one of the comments on the Steam page be like, this ruined it for me. So I was like, yeah. I'm not clicking them then. Um because I'm guessing that just basically tells you the answer. But yeah, yeah there's there's a little hint, there's oh, a little wow. hints page, which I thought I thought was really cool. Because... Honestly, some of some of the stuff that I found just like naturally, I was just like I kind of lucked out finding this. Like I wasn't yeah. even looking for oh, it, and I stumbled too. upon it. It just yeah. happened to be what I was looking for. But I, I, I could have wasted so much time being like, "Where the fuck is it?" Just like I'll go to random web pages until I see it. It took it took me the longest time to remember, like because I, I think they might have mentioned it earlier in the game, but I'd forgotten that to find the headband codes. Yes, you have yeah. To, you have to press the I, and I just I just couldn't remember. I was like. How do I find out what these F codes are? I got in there. I was like, I don't know what the yeah, F codes like. What I, do I have to I, figure it out? I didn't do that until um, I got into the Fliss section or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, because I... basically when you get when you get to that point, just for so everyone knows, like you you can like search people up with their with F and then their code for their headband. But finding those headband codes, you have to like look at the information on their page to find it. So so Flist is like the file sharing um, server that they have, and mm. you can look up once you gain access to it. You can look up any user and see what files they have for sharing. Um, but you have to gain access to it. How did you guys gain access to the to the Flist? Oh, I can't even remember. Because <laughs> I felt like a genius doing it, but I want to know. I think there were multiple ways that you could do it. I just wanted to confirm. I, I couldn't tell you. Yeah, I, I know I did that, it today. Was that, was, that, was that the one where you had to take the the journey through like the eternal quest line thing, like on the map? Was that was that the map? No, yeah. no, no, not the freelance stuff. It was oh, like you had to get okay. you had to get a password to access the file sharing network. Is that one you have to buy? You don't have to buy it. But you can oh, I bought buy it. it. I bought it, okay. and then I. I'm, yeah, oh, I'm yeah, I remember no, I did it. I know, I I know bought, what you're talking about. Yeah, now, I I'm bought it, and then like you get you have to have the pet right. And then you feed yeah. the like the encrypted burger to your pet, yeah. and it shits out oh. the passcode. That's how. Yeah, that's yeah, that's it. Because I did that later. I did. I I fed the pet a sandwich later. Yeah, I, I had to do it because yeah. I had to, I spent two hundred hypno credits on like a so, password that got emailed to me. And okay. I, and, to me, and I was like staring at this encrypted thing for ages, and I was like, it looks like a burger. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> and then the thing ate it. Yeah. You can actually gain access to the Fliss for free. You can you can like guess one of the users' passwords, which was really I felt like a genius doing it. I'll just go ahead and tell you. So like, yeah, uh, yes. uh, please there's, do. Um, there's uh, I I know you, you, mean. you know the guy Greg. He has that like what in the world page where he gives like tech yeah. tips and stuff. He has a page about passwords, and he's like, you really need to make a strong password. For example. Here's something that I think would be good. And he's like, let's say you have your uh, uh, your your place of birth and then your favorite thing and then the, your, your date of birth. That would be a great password. And then he gives an example of like, you know, uh, like let's say if you were born in Denver and your favorite thing was computers, hey, mine too. And you were born in 1984, then it would be Denver Computers 1984. And then I was like, I can crack this guy's password. And I was like, I already know that his favorite thing's computers. <laughs> And so I figured, and then so like I, I looked at his like headband ID, and he was born in 1950, and I was like, aha! And then I found out that he was born in Lexington, Kentucky, from something else. I can't remember how I found that part. That might have been on his headband. No, I think I think it was something else. Anyway, and then I was like, so your password is Lexington Computers 1950, and I put it in, and I got it in for free, and I was just That's like, so cool. that was fucking awesome. About that, that was so oh, cool. Good. I was like, you made me feel dumb for being like, yeah. I'll feed the encrypted thing to yeah, the pet. I, just, I, I felt know, so I, smart I, when yeah, I did that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think that I think the game does a great job of making you like giving you just enough information to where you can take that extra step if you want to. Because like, you know, I, I I didn't figure out the sandwich thing on the pet. Mm-hmm. I had to do that later, and I and I just didn't put two and two together on that. I had to I look it up. Better, so. I stared at it for a long time to be like, I don't know what I'm doing with this thing. I was like, I just, why does I it had look my, like a sandwich? Yeah, yeah. I had just had that little squisher thing because I got I, at one point I was like, I don't know what to do, so I just bought the squisher pet. Oh <laughs> I was yeah. Like, I was like, maybe this will do something. 
Yeah, I the bought part? the the Angel Hamster desktop buddy. Which one? I can't remember which one just, I bought. Hold on. It was just shitting never... on my desktop for a long time. Oh my god. It just constantly... Uh, I named it chat, because I was streaming the game at the time. I named it chat and it died so quickly. <laughs> no, I, I was about to say, the first pet that I got, I like, pet it a little bit, bought food, and I was like, yeah, whatever. And I like, bought some food on the desktop that I was like, that'll keep it busy. And then I, I went down some rabbit hole. Yeah. Where I was just like going through web pages, and I was like, I haven't heard the pet in a while. And I went to the desktop, and it was dead. And it's dead. Didn't eat its food that I left for it. You have to feed it. It's like a night blight. Well, like, <laughs> you can lead a horse to water, but it should try and well, at least drink the water itself. It, idiot I saw horse. It, I saw it automatically eat food before. Like, I saw it I walk over and be like, ah, rah, rah, rah. I tell you what, it won't it. automatically eat food, but it will have no problem shitting everywhere. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, my desktop was covered <laughs> by the time I remembered to check my desktop because I was too busy doing my job. How yeah, messy? Exactly. Daddy's how mess making money. How messy was everyone's desktop by the end? Oh, so oh, bad. I put all I, the squisher I, I, stickers all over it. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I put stuff on. I, I made it messy on purpose too. Yeah. I, I yeah. went. I went back and I started retroactively buying like the hot dog stickers and just everything. And my I turned it into a mess by the end because like. My brain was trying to see if I overloaded it or something, if it would do something. Oh, okay, yeah. I spent, I a, lo I spent a long time doing nothing playing that game today before I was like, I have to focus on the story now because <laughs> I've only got like two hours left. <laughs> yeah, there's only so many times you can go to Zane's page and hear like, bow, 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 bow. <laughs> reporting him for harassment, of which he does quite a lot. Can oh we talk my god, about that? that. Yes, oh, my favorite bit of the game. Because. I I didn't ban anybody. I didn't flag anybody. Oh. I just reported them, and I was like, why would I flag them? I want them to stick around. And I didn't realize that that's actually how you save people. Yeah. So I'll I'll explain that very quickly. Sorry, go this, ahead. This yeah. is like a major spoiler. This is, but, yeah. So in the game, basically Y2K happens on Hypnospace, where when it becomes the year 2000 or whatever something occurs and it causes people to die essentially but if you've banned them they're not online at new year's eve because they've been banned and that's yeah. how you save people you don't realize this but if you've banned someone then they're not using hypnospace when it happens so they don't die at the end yeah because because there's six people that die there's uh twilight tiff there's zane R.I.P. Oh, like, Rip Zane, Rip Zane, yeah. I was yeah. so sad when I saw Zane as like, yeah. one of the people that died. I was like, he was 15 years old. He was just yeah. a little lad. He's but... the babe. So oh, I could have yeah, banned you... these people. Because like, I, I, like, yeah. I felt like I tried, and they, they kept saying they haven't, they haven't done enough. I feel like I banned one banned person. I thought oh, really? I banned I think, I, think, really I, think I killed five, so if there's I, six, then I think yeah. I banned someone. I banned one person. I killed five. I think Dylan killed five. Yes, exactly. But yeah, that's how you save people by banning oh, them. Which is it was funny. it was it was like one of those moments where I was just like, oh, maybe a, yeah, because that's like a that's like a major moment. The the I didn't the realize what you just said. I'm like a little shocked. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the game is very like weirdly shocking. Like you get into the kind of this rhythm of just like browsing web pages and being like, you know, just like I am the chowder man, like singing along to the songs and being like, oh Zane, squishers, oh you, yeah. But then you have these moments where it's just like people die or like Dylan bans you or the whole hypnospaces crashes like kind of takes you out of it for a yeah. second <clears throat> yeah the first time that the first time you played the test game that Dylan sent you and it like crashed everything like that surprised the shit out of me I was just like what is happening yeah. like everything was because I was like I think that was the first time that, that it crashes right where it just like gets yeah. all pixelated and, like, yes you, lo you lose control of the, of the terminal and everything's like okay what yeah I yeah. think that's one of the reasons why it stuck with me is like it's a little horror as well. It is as a being little, funny. Yeah. It's a little Ooh. creepy at times and it's definitely you, when you find these like hidden hacked files and you begin to realize that there's like some quite insidious stuff going on and you can lose control of your computer and then eventually people start dying. It's like it's yeah. a little creepy. A little or that origin. stupid right. yeah. That stupid uh somebody that hacks all the pages and he puts the, the heart with the eyes and it's supposed to oh, be yeah. like disturbing and oh, it's like yeah. dumb noise and you have to report it for being like disturbing oh, the content. sound yeah the bow, bow, oh, bow, 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 bow. and yeah there, it's because the old internet could be kind of creepy like when you get hacked <laughs> and all of a sudden you lose control <laughs> of your computer or whatever yeah it could be quite 
scary. There's a, a horror game called Kinito Pet that's basically what if Bonzi Buddy was evil. That oh, I really is that that new recently. one? Everybody's yes. been asking yeah. me about that. Okay. That's really fun, actually. I would really recommend that as well if you get the time. Nice. Yeah, I but think yeah. I think there were some comparable experiences with this game that I had. Like, I don't know. Have any of you played Welcome to the Game 1 or mm, 2? Yeah, yeah. No. Or scrutinized no. or anything? So... So I, I was playing it for, for a couple hours before I was just like, you know, I think this is like if Humongous Entertainment made Welcome to the Game. The Pajama Sam developers. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> there's so many things that you could like click on. They're just like, bah, bah, or like make kind of some kind of noise or something like that. And it's it's like weirdly wholesome. But then you, you also get a lot of like the, you know, web page browsing action where it's, you know, just like you go down little rabbit holes and stuff. It was cool, though. Like, this is definitely a unique take on it. I think we talked about this on the podcast last time, or I dreamt I had this conversation. Sometimes it happens to me. When I log on to a computer, I want it to sound happy to see me. We did talk about this. We yeah. did talk about this, right? Yeah. 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 And that's <laughs> exactly what Hypnospace Outlaw is all about, where it's like, boo, 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 yeah. when you log on and everything makes a little jingle and a little noise, because it's like, wow, we are in cyberspace. And now it's just like... Yeah, yeah. You're just here to look at Twitter and get annoyed. So uh, yeah, I like I like they got to the point when I was playing the game. If a web page didn't have music, I was a bit confused. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can hear myself think. Yeah, it's like, so all right, this is silent. Yeah, and then I would hear my pet fart in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take a shit on my screen <laughs> in the dead silence. Mm. Then it would go quiet. And you're like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh, another tombstone. I haven't heard the pet in a while. Oh. It has died. Yeah, yeah, I really I enjoyed just, the I game. Just, I just logged on to check on my to which pet it was, and it was dead. So my pet's dead. <laughs> yes. R.I.P. R.I.P. Little R.I.P. in the bottom corner. Oh. Rest in peace. Bless. Yeah. But then when you download that cheat program, some of the cheats are like infinite food. Pet never gets hungry. Like you can hack it so the pet never dies. Oh. Yeah. That's the world I want to live in. I need to get that cheat program. Great world. Yeah, I I, I was surprised at how much optional stuff there is because like there's. So many things that you guys are bringing up that I'm like, oh, I never did that, or I never yeah. checked that out. Yeah. And there's, there's like a main story and there's a main path, but then there's so much stuff that you can get lost in just off to the side. So many yeah, secret the pages. Of, the amount of pages I was just like reading, just enjoying yeah. the world. Yep. Yeah. I'd find, I'd find myself down big rabbit holes where I'm like, this can't possibly be something relevant, but I'm still here and this is really fun. So I'm going to yeah. keep doing this. It's hard like to I, not yeah. get stuck. Yeah. 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 The free, the freelance quiz. Oh, I assume we all God, have to do that. Or, yeah, oh, yeah, I, I yeah. was like, you have to yeah. go through all that trouble to get there, and then it's like, oh, let's see how much you've been paying attention. And they quiz you yeah. on the stuff. I was actually, I was all right that for the most part with that. I got like the first four or yeah. something, and I was like, oh, sweet, because I spent so much time, and I think there was the five or something. I think there was six questions. I think number five I got wrong. I was like, all right, I just died having a go. <laughs> yeah. I, I knew most of them, but then. Yep. Some of them I was just like guessing. It was like I guess I yeah. I guessed on one that I ended up getting by guessing, but I got everything else on the freelance quiz. Yeah, the freelance. That guy, that guy was one of my favorite voice actors in the game too. That whole, <laughs> oh my god, oh yeah, so, the little video so nineties internet. Yeah. yeah, next go on your path. Like, oh, yeah. this guy, this guy would have been one of my boys. Of this guy would have been my guy in high school. We would have hung out in high school for sure. Yeah. yeah. I want to be my this guy, played, this guy played magic for sure. Yeah, like, he played magic. He if was, you he want was, to he was find out the maiden's identity, you must solve these riddles three. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was my guy, dude. I love that. Let's take this yeah. outside. The, shit, <laughs> yeah. the, shitty, the shitty recording quality, the little chuckles because he was he had a little condescending. Like, yeah, he was. He's yeah, better than you. He knows it. He Let's knows he's solve my you, riddle. Dude. That's me. <laughs> it's very like i said it's like very kind of earnest and it's very charming and it's very cringy and i think a lot of us think about how we were in the past where yes we were like a little embarrassing and silly but i kind of there's something about it where it's like oh it was nice to be so in my own little head free. and not be so aware yeah, cringe yet free whereas now yes. you're like oh somebody on social media thinks that i'm probably gonna look dumb if i do this you know, or yeah, we're so self-aware now because we're always able to see an audience of people who are like, that's weird. Why are you like that? Ew. But back in yeah. the old days, you're just like, here's my little website. 
Well, also, also now people like their their default reaction to things is negative. Their default oh, interpretations yeah. of things is bad faith. Like they see you post something, oh, especially man. now. Like the thing is, like back then, it's like if somebody was looking at your Zanga or your MySpace or something, they probably knew you or were a friend of a friend. But now total strangers are in your timeline on Twitter and Instagram and stuff like people that you have no idea who they are. And so, yeah, their, their initial knee jerk reaction is going to be like, who's this fuck face? You know, like, <laughs> right. Fuck yeah, yeah. Oh, you had a bad day today. Fuck you. You know, um, that's a really good point. That's a, like, people have to be interested in that thing to sort of see it in the old internet. Whereas now yeah. people who have no interest in your hobby can see you post about your hobby and then be like, you fucking idiot. Like, I, I remember on my Zanga, my little, you know, uh, page, I would just post, like, the most zane shit in the world. Just, like, I would literally do exactly what he did of just, like, I'm gonna give myself a survey. I'm awesome. I'm 14. You know, and just, like, go on and on. Like, I love Linkin Park, etc. Make a comic and, where you have cool powers. Yeah. Just, like, totally, totally <laughs> useless like trash. All I can think, all I can think about is that that cartoon he does, where he like describes that other kid's mom as a toilet full of diarrhea. <laughs> yeah, he was like, kind of mean. Is a little shithead. <laughs> he was a little, he was a little oh, meaner Zane, than oh, I was. Yeah. Zane oh, was that, fifteen for sure. That, I, I read that bit yeah. out like like ten times. I was just rolling. It was the best thing. <laughs> but like, but like, I would post stuff like that when I was like thirteen, and just like random like friends of friends would be like, "Hey, you're pretty cool." And I, I didn't even do anything, you know? And that's an interaction that you don't have now. You don't have people coming up to you and being like, hey, you know what? You're pretty cool. That tweet that you wrote about, uh, you know, Sable from DVD, that was pretty cool. I liked that. Want to be friends? Nobody does that shit anymore. <laughs> yeah. No. yeah. I mean, I, I don't hate the way that the internet is now holy or anything, but it's just kind of some things that we've lost, yeah. I guess. I think I think the negativity bias is an interesting thing because, like, for example, if you get a comment on a YouTube video, like, there's some positive ones in there, but like, the some people just watch it and just focus on the negative aspects, and it's really like deflating. They exclusively yeah. comment on the negative parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I yeah, I've, I've confronted people like that before. That like they'll just serially comment just over and over again, like only negative stuff, and I'll be like, "What's wrong with you?" Basically, and they'll be like, "Oh, I'm a big fan." Love your stuff. And I'd be like, you never say it, though. You just only comment on the negative stuff. But that's just how people are. Yeah. yeah. You only make a yeah. comment when I've, like, made a mistake about something or I've pronounced something incorrectly. Yeah. It's but yeah, you watch everything I do. Negativity bias, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. it's like um, the tweet left the intended audience effect. Yes. It's a big part of the modern internet, whereas... It was really hard to come across things if you weren't actively looking for them previously, I guess is the big difference. I'm quite lucky. I've, no, I've never been out of my bubble. Like, no one's ever, like, come across a tweet I've done where it's, like, left my circle. Never had to deal with it. That's good. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. The life is young, bro. It's okay, though. You just mute the thread, <laughs> yeah. and then it's like, it, it's like it's not happening. It's that's, not real, right? Yeah. That's, that's the advice you guys yeah. have said before, so I'm like, that's what I'll do. Because it's not hey, like it's they're fun. gonna go to your other tweets and harass you, unless you've really fucked up, but... Mm. Yeah. There'll be something else that they got annoyed about that takes their attention very quickly, yeah, so they'll forget right. about it. Someone, yeah. someone will engage them, and then they'll have their battle, and they won't be worried about you anymore. So. Yeah. Someone else will do something that's more legitimately um, egregious and just go after them. Egregious. Yeah. Egregious? Egregious. 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 Yeah. Egregious. My brain's like, how is this word working, and why is it not sounding right in my brain? <laughs> you got there. See, now that you we've know. told Gary the right pronunciation, nobody has to make a comment about it. We've got yeah. it. nobody. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I expect yeah, one see, or two we've, people we've might taken still care it. of it. No, no. Somebody, as soon as Gary said it wrong, somebody has paused the video and they were like, "It's pronounced egregious." <laughs> Immediately, yeah. you fucking idiot. Yeah. University lecturer, lol. Oh, lol. <laughs> lol. Ha ha. <laughs> I'm glad you guys enjoyed it though. Loved it. Yeah, like it I'm, glad you, I'm glad you recommended that one. I no. think it was it was yeah. so interesting, unique. Didn't. Didn't just liked it, loved it. Um, not at first. It took me a little while to get comfortable, but like once, I, it's like you get addicted to it. And again, I think like you, you hit the nail on the head with it being like we all kind of had that experience with the internet growing up. So you have the nostalgia, and it's like we wouldn't want to go back to it, but it was nice to go back to it for a little while and mm. play with it. Yeah, um, like, like let's not forget that internet was a cesspool. 
yeah. as well. Like there were parts of that were just horrible. No, mm. like it's amazing that I could take my phone out and see what people are up to nowadays so easily. Yeah. You know, there's definitely yeah. things about the internet now where I'm like, well, yeah. Every the... so often, we should stop and think about how amazing it is that I can have friends in America that I can talk to in real time. You know, every single right. day, yeah, uh, interact with, record podcasts. Yeah. But... Yeah, right. oh, yeah, it's yeah. it's definitely cool. I would say the internet back then was a lot lonelier, and I definitely felt the effects of that, which but was also, positive, but also negative. Going on Pojo.com to talk about Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Exactly. Complete strangers. Yo, you know Pojo. what I used to do? Yeah. Here's, here's something crazy. You guys, I don't know if you guys have, have even heard of this, but like back in the day, um, professional wrestling had like an underground internet. This is like in the 90s, like had an underground like tape trading groups. And so what we I would do, that shit. this is the, this is the coolest shit I ever did in my life. Like I would like, you would have a list on the internet of all the wrestling pay-per-views you had on VHS and people would contact you and be like, Hey, I want your Royal Rumble 95. I'll trade you my ECW barely legal 97. And you're like, cause that's not on your list. And you'd have like a want list and a have list. And you would literally like just on blind faith, you would make a copy of a VHS and mail it out. And then whoever initiated yeah. it would mail first. And then you mail it back yeah. and not one time in the years that I did it, did I ever get ripped off? Like, it was like, we just, it was this really cool, like you, and like, so there's a dude who used to tra tape trade with my friend Kelsey. And then he ended up making it into pro wrestling. He's like literally in the WWE right now. And he like invited Kelsey to his wedding. Like they're boys. Like they became friends Aww. off of, off of tape trading in high school. And like that's a connection that they kept like for the rest of their lives. It's really, really cool. I suppose and that's the thing. Like now we all are so aware of what can happen. Mm -hmm. And so now no one trusts anyone just because of the off chance yeah. that they're all bastards. Yeah. Yeah, I used to I used to trade Yu-Gi-Oh cards on Pojo.com forums actually. So and it was the same type of thing of like we would just be like, okay, we're gonna do this, and we'd send our cards to each other. And uh there was like a rep system and like i think whoever had the lower rep mailed theirs first or something like that but uh yeah it was so it was crazy cool, like though. looking back i was just like i was just giving my address to strangers just yeah. like yeah and you're just like i didn't think just, anything about it and now you're like, like where's my DoorDash? dash it's, it's like yeah it's like all you had though that was all you, had. you couldn't just stream stuff like right i yeah. was like i yeah. it's like i'm sitting around i'm like i would love to watch royal rumble 95 like i have no option to do that unless i have it in phys like a physical copy of it and yeah. if you don't have that, like, what do you do? You just don't get to see it. So we, I, it was really, I don't know. Like, I still think about that once in a while. Just like, what a cool, because it was like, it was, it was, I wouldn't take it back. I wouldn't trade for it. I wouldn't go back to that. But it's really cool that I got to yeah. experience that. And like, do that think, was Do you think it was good for us? Because like, as a society, we had to be more trusting and work together a little more. Whereas now, as, nowadays, you can be a little more selfish and just do yeah. things yourself. I do think that maybe if you really wanted to get like really deep about it, like, yeah, that's kind of real, right? Yeah. We had, to, I th yeah, we had I think, to rely on other people more back then. So people I think that's part of it. Kind Sorry, of. go ahead, Doug. No, yeah. you're not, please. Uh, I think it's also the fact that like you, you had more patience back then. You had to wait for stuff. You had to anticipate yeah, mm -hmm. stuff and look forward to it. It's like when you did that tape trade, you were probably checking the mail every day. Like, is, yeah. it, is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Yeah. And now everything's just instant gratification. Like Sino said, where's my DoorDash? Hello? You know, I ordered it 30 yeah. minutes ago. Yeah. Um, this tour everything's slow. just what the fuck? instant now. Yeah. And I kind of, I kind of miss when things moved a little slower like that sometimes. But yeah, having I to work for it, for like it. you said. Yeah. I think that's like, why people, you just got to force it now. You got to like do things. You got to force yourself to go on that walk outside. You got to force yourself to turn the phone off and go, you know, do some like meditate for a while. Like you have to, yeah. like, you have, like life's not going to slow down for you because life moves really fast now. So we have to like slow yeah. down ourselves. Yeah. Right. That True. Make, like be intentional with slowing things down. Man, look at mm -hmm. Hypno Space making us think about life. That's why yeah. it's such a it's good, good. Very... excellent choice. Excellent choice. Yeah, okay. very good choice. They've all been good so far, actually. I've been enjoy I've been enjoying everybody's choices. Yeah, um, me too. Yeah, just real quick, have y'all played uh, the developers' other game, Dropsy, at all? I mentioned no, that you've before. No, because you, you know, John, I want to pick your brain for a bunch of games anyway to stream because oh, okay, yeah. I'm in my variety era, and you said Dropsy's a game that I would particularly like. I, that's a Gary game, I think. It was it was a game they made like several years before. Just one of them, I think, Jay Tholen, who was the main uh, developer on Hypnospace. But it's basically just like about a clown that wants to hug people and make them happy. Oh, that sounds really cute. Yeah, it's a really wholesome game. I think you would like it. Oh, okay, I would like that. That sounds adorable. I assumed it was a horror game. 
It has some semi-horror elements to it, but not really, no. It's okay. it's more just a classic point-and-click adventure game. Because I want to play... Is it Granny? Granny, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why did you react like that? I thought it was good. No, no, gra no. Granny is good. Legitimately, <laughs> Granny is good. But there's, it's just, it's such a meme now. People, <laughs> okay. people bug me about it still. There's Baldi's Basics, another one. Honestly, Baldi's Basics, I, I was getting kind of the same vibes from that as Hypnospace Outlaw, less, okay. less deep. Uh, it looks shit from like what I've seen, <laughs> just in, like well, graphically. I haven't seen any gameplay. I've just seen like. I mean, Pictures. yeah, it's it's modeled after like '90s edutainment games, yeah. specifically like Sonic Schoolhouse. Um, what? I don't know what that is, but it's an edutainment game from <laughs> yeah, Sonic. Like educational entertainment. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know what those yeah. are. Oh, I thought um, you know yeah. the actual. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a it's like Sonic's edutainment game, like specifically that one, but also like you know Jumpstart games and Roger Rabbit and stuff like that. Okay, so I, that's I that's why that. it looks like that, but I yeah. think it's. I think they nailed the the vibe of it. Yeah, I'm quite excited to play it. So, like, if you guys have those weird horror games for me to play, let me know, and I'm gonna stop playing them. So, don't be surprised on the podcast you start hearing me be like, "Right, I've played Granny. It's been out for like four years, but I finally want to talk about this game or whatever." <laughs> oh, did you guys know that there's a Hypnospace spinoff game? It's called Slayers X, and it's starring Zane. What? Yeah. How? No, it's like, I didn't know that. It came out last year. It came out uh, in like June last year. It's called Slayers X, and it's like a boomer shooter where you play as Zane, I think, and like a fictionalized version of him. And you're out like, like you're like a Slayer X, and you're like taking down the it's demon like dude. horde oh and stuff. God, yeah. The Psycho Syndicate, I think, is what it's called. Yeah, I was just wondering what if you guys that? had stumbled across that or not. That sounds crazy. I yeah. see a screenshot here of a. A hooded figure saying, Zane, your hack blood power is growing, but you are not quite ready to yield its full power. Dot, 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 yet. <laughs> it looks really cheesy. I love this. Yeah, no, I, I, totally I, saw, this. I saw the trailer for it and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to have to bring that up on the podcast. That okay, seems okay, okay. crazy because I think it went under the radar a bit. Dude, it's got, it's got fucking DLC. Like Slayer's X Terminal yeah. After Terminal Aftermath. This is so funny, dude. Terminal <laughs> Aftermath: Vengeance of the Slayer is the name. Yeah, it's That's such a so good, name, dude. right? Yeah, so good, dude. <laughs> oh, it's like yeah. MS Paint graphics. We're, These we're gonna psychos have to, will pay. We're gonna have to try this out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's what I'm. <laughs> Yeah, if you yeah, if you guys get the chance in the next two weeks to like just test it out a little bit, and that's like oh, a yeah, non book club thing, just as a curiosity, well, I, I'm a probably demo. gonna check there's, it out. There's a, oh, demo, a demo, so we can we can try there it for free. Yeah. yeah. Literally, Zane's like, oh, this is so good. All right, we can go. <laughs> yeah, Zane's dream came true after playing him space, <laughs> especially after Zane died in my playthrough. I was like, damn, I want more Zane. Well, I'm like shocked that he can it. live still. I can't go over that. I kind of want to replay again just so I can save everyone. Yeah, yeah. It has twisted music by seepage. Yep, yep. <laughs> <gasps> the uh, Hypnospace Outlaw universe grows. That's so cool. It yeah, so started making it. it in 1998 in high school with my friend, and now I'm 37. So I have life experience now. <laughs> it's a world where Zane lives. Oh my god, it's, it, it's a 37-year-old modern-day Zane making a game. Amazing. That's funny. Perfect. I love. I just love like the the the, the runoff name. Like it's so funny. It's <laughs> yeah, all the, it's got two subtitles. Yeah, that is so funny. That means, like, that means the, tr in the true ending. He survives. That's nice to know. Yeah. Terminal aftermath. Vengeance of the Slayer. <laughs> got the gun <laughs> sideways, dude. Like it's so good. Yeah, it, I mean, like from the gameplay I watched, I was like, this is legitimately looks like really fun. Like more than just a meme yeah. for sure. I'm definitely playing this. So, next book club game. Oh, yeah. I guess that's me, huh? That's I Doug's mean, turn, right? This is hard because um, I kind of had a game picked out. And then we we went on that little Pokemon journey earlier. And now I'm like, I'm really leaning towards Pokemon Unite as my book club <laughs> game. Because I'd mm. love to have you guys come back to that. Um, it's whatever you want, Doug. It's your it's your book yeah. club. Your time. Yeah. Yeah. Like whatever, uh -huh. whatever you would like to play and discuss see, with us. Let's see, let's see if there's any like good hentai games out. 
Uh, no, I, <laughs> no, I think let's do. Are Pokemon you a Unite. hentai guy, Doug? No, I'm definitely not. I was, I was gonna just, say you don't strike me as such. No, definitely not. No, I think uh, I think it'd be fun to play Unite. I think it'd be a fun game for us to link up on. We all have like we're all adjacent Pokemon enjoyers. Um, we yeah. all played it when it came out. Everybody's been kind of been on a brick. I think that'd be fun. I think it'd be more fun than my other i yeah my other idea. And I think what I want to try to do is since we have now we'll have like a solid few weeks of you guys picking out games. I'll try and come up with like a good single player game um maybe something that i've played like back in my youth or something like that i really enjoyed that was like influential to me that maybe you guys haven't played yet oh um, that'd be fun it'd be kind of fun so i think yeah, i think that's that's one thing where i'm like enjoying my spare time going oh this could be a good game yeah because yeah. well, because i've been kind of kind of thanks to the book club i've been kind of like playing more single player games and kind of liking it, you know i've been like I got, hmm. I got back into yeah. i got back into animal animal crossing recently like I'm back playing Animal Crossing, which has been really fun. I played that a lot awesome. with COVID, like during the, the quarantine, and I just like started playing that. And then I played that Sonic Superstars game, which I had a fucking ball with, and I'm gonna 100% that game for sure. So, yeah, it's yeah, kind of fun. I definitely think a good book club choice is a game that also reveals a little bit of yourself to other people when they play it, like yeah. maybe how you Your grew up or where taste. you come from. So. One day I will make you play Umineko, but until that day, Hypnospace, that was how I grew up on the internet. So You're gonna need like you're gonna need like eight weeks to play through Umineko. <laughs> you only have to do chapter one. And it's not even the book club game yet, and we're already razzing me for it, as you well, fair enough. <laughs> One this day, is my uncle. Day. This is my aunt. This is my second cousin. This you, is my second can, cousin's husband. Can you say the can you say the game's title again? So it, in U, English it's U, When U, the Umin Seagulls Cry. Uminako. But we call it I just call it Umineko, which is U just seagull. When the seagulls cry. Say, say it again. Umi neko. Umi Umineko. Umineko. Umi no. When, U, Umineko. It's when like if you like Danganronpa cry. or the Zero Escape series, here. it's like that. Here, here, Gary, I'll spell it for you. That's alright, I don't know. Umineko. I'm nailing it. Oh, Umi Neko, mate. Oh my god. You know what? I want to play some Umi Neko. You know what? Get... Umi Neko. So no, I think if you want to be, if you want to protect one of your favorite games. Yeah, I'm beginning to regret. My <laughs> From Gary's of life. Uh, bell sproutage, perhaps. What does, maybe what? don't pick it. You fancy the Umi Neko? That's not an Umi Neko, shall we? Yeah. I'm playing Umi Neko right now. Oh my gosh. All right. So anyway, Pokemon The complete United collection is $76. Um, no. Yeah. I mean, when the seagulls cry sounds like a hymn song. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I think that, yeah, That's I think true. Pokemon, Pokemon, you know, would be fun. We could all die. We can all dive in and play individually and then maybe like set up a session sometime in the next week and a, a half. Session? We all, session with the lads? We all play, we all play together. Might be kind Ooh, of fun. I would love to do that. Yeah. I'm yeah. I could, I could flex my Machamp muscles. That was my main before. I would mm. love that. Yeah. You were really Although good. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be. It's I'll gonna be, be hard not to play Tyranitar. No, Tyranitar is in the game. I mean, you can play both. We can. The games go quick. It's ten minutes. It's like a set clock too. It's very. One of the things I like about it is how it's so it moves real quick. You get in, you draft. Hmm. You don't draft because I'm not playing in Masters. But you get in, you pick, you play, and you're out. Like so you one games. big question for me. And this is one of the reasons why I kind of stopped playing. I never like hated it or anything. But this when I was playing. Yes, absolutely. When I was playing Pokemon Unite, it felt like eight minutes of, like, you know, back and forth, the tide can turn, and then in the last two minutes, Zapdos spawns, and whatever team got the last hit in Zapdos got, like, a mega buff, and they just win. It was always that Zapdos was how you won the game. Have they lowered how much yes. Zapdos counts? Yes. They've lowered They've lowered the impact, big, like, greatly. It's not... I know what you're talking about. Like, the first few months the game was out, it was just, like, whatever team, like wins the last fight wins the game it's not so yeah. much like that anymore you are rewarded for winning the game like for leading like you have you have if you have a level advantage going into the final which is rayquaza now in the rank in ranked right now is rayquaza um you if you have an advantage you'll have an advantage going in and getting it is a sure thing basically a sure thing you win but you can actually you can actually have big comebacks by winning rayquaza or zapdos at the end um if you win the fight there it's just one of those things that like you shouldn't win the fight there if like team plays well and, and is properly leveled up like if it's close it can still be close but if you're like yeah. really really far behind then you're just gonna lose because you're probably gonna lose momentum. the team fight unless they right. completely throw right They're, you're gonna right. lose the team fight so unless people don't show up and then sometimes i've had i've been on teams that were like way behind and we won rayquaza and we still didn't win the game like we still didn't have the juice right. to, to to come back and win 
that was my so. only complaint is like your team can be absolute fucking dog shit for eight minutes and then yeah. if you just get lucky no. with zapdos you just won no it was we like, had that oh, so many times towards the strong. end it's where we'd be stomping like them and then they would win zapdos and no. we'd be like well that sucked that was not fun <laughs> We it doesn't that. in my i played a lot like last season and i just started playing again this season and in my experience no it's not like that at all oh i'm so excited then that's cool i'm yeah. excited Good. to revisit it yeah me too nice. honestly like i'm i'm really excited about playing it again i'm kind of excited to see if there's any other weird pokemon about it oh there's you so can play many comfy now. gary hmm you can play comfy i can yeah oh i could I was I was looking at the website when we were talking about it earlier. Metagross, Gyarados, Blaziken. Those are kind uh, of cool Pokemon. Not Umbreon's really. a good one. Not like Lapras. Gary Speed. <gasps> Lapras is in it. Yes, yeah. Lapras. Oh, is I love Lapras. Lapras. Lapras is strong too. Oh, I love Lapras. Does Lapras Azumarill. have like a million HP? As Azumarill's in it. Yes. <gasps> is the happy it. Pokemon. And you start off as Meryl. So cute. Oh! It's adorable. Okay, Pika Dragonite. Yeah, Pika Blue. <laughs> does, does the Pika Blue rumor was just that was Meryl, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, it was it just was. Meryl. Yeah. Does Dragonite start off as Dratini then? Uh, I think yeah, yeah, yeah. It just feels like it'd be weird to see that thing like worming around, worming around. Yeah, yeah. I I let off an embarrassingly pleased noise when I I, I was thought you were watching... saying a fart. I honestly <laughs> thought you were going in a fart. Gary, right? it's this not is very... about taking a chip. I was just like, I was just like <laughs> this is so unlike Sinnoh. Yeah, because I don't like toilet humor. You guys know that. Uh, no, the first time I watched somebody play as Espeon and you start off as Eevee, oh, so cute. You're so adorable. You're like just a little baby bean. And then you evolve and you get fucking badass. Do you pre pick what evolution you have? Yeah, I think so. So they, so yeah. you're, do you, but your opponents might not know which one you are. I think I'll no, say I... it on the screen. Oh, okay. Yeah, but that would be really right, cool if they wouldn't know. Like you pick Leafeon or Umbreon, but it's yeah. just at the start you. It's like when you're getting experience at the start, it takes a little while. So that's why some Pokemon are really strong in the beginning because they don't really have to evolve. And so I, so I, yeah, I assume every EV is well. the same at the start then. Yeah, and then yeah. your moves change. Tackle, yeah. quick attack, <laughs> sand attack. Wow, but very cute. Tail whip, cute and fun. Dodrio is also in the game. Of all, weird oh, yeah. choice. Weird Do choice. Dodrio got nerfed. Dodrio is like crazy. <laughs> the Dodrio now. nerf. No. Yeah, no, it's, it's real. It's real, though. Like, I'm imagining rage threads on the Pokemon Unite subreddit. Like, yeah. so I got nerfed Dodrio. It's out of control. Well, the no, Metagross. Hate Dodrio Meta players. Meta Metagross was the last one. Metagross was the last problem child. They like buffed Metagross. Like, so Metagross has only been in the game for a short time. And like when Metagross came out, they were like, everybody was joking that Metagross was pay to lose because it was just terrible. Mm -hmm. And and nobody it was like unplayable and so then they just like fucking omega buffed him and he was like insane i like i wrote him like i re i went up like two ranks playing metagross only like a fucking rat i was like oh this guy's nasty i just, I just love the idea that so, it would be like they've made such a shit character so they went all right then buff and then they're like oh, we should have just stepped quiet yeah, <laughs> yeah they're like wait they're like wait just, no it's no, like wait. sideshow bob walking <laughs> to the rake yeah dojo dojo and metagross are the two like most recent problem child characters that were like if they're that's why this next this recent season they added they added bans and they added draft so like now that'll be like less of a problem because before there was no draft no bans so everybody would just every like masters game would have like the same basically the same characters and then it would just be like well whoever's is better is gonna win so, there's enough yeah. pokemon now I, I can see from this web page there's like 50 60 of them that they can afford to have like a ban phase mm. i'm excited yeah. to play as a marrow <gasps> we can play as mew that's cute what? yeah Mew. Yeah, so that. that is cute. Oh. Isn't Celebi in the game too? Or am I making that no. up? No. I can't Does see I Celebi. I Mew say, and oh, okay. Mewtwo, but not Celebi. I, oh, yeah, okay. so I, I would become... Celebi be too powerful. They can control time. Oh, well, yes, Celebi... I'm sure they're going to have that power in the game. They have Gary. to. That's what he does. So they have to. <laughs> it has to be lore accurate. Yeah. In in the MOBA where you... Uh, yeah, I like Celebi. Gary, you've got like floral reefs playing against like dragons that have psychic powers. I think it's okay. No, yeah. no, it's that'll be should be rewind time. Okay. Anyway, I'm looking forward to talking about that on the next episode. Yeah. Next time. Looking forward to it a little less now. But... Why? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Gary ruined my game. <laughs> <laughs> By being too enthusiastic and excited. Yeah, this is going to be fun. I'm looking forward yeah, to it. Yeah, that's why. Oh. I know that we're, we're looking up, we're winding down, but I have a question for you guys about the quarry that I needed to ask, just because I asked my Ooh. chat it, and they got very surprised. 
So just for context, Gary, you have a new YouTube video about Until Dawn and the Quarry on your YouTube channel, right? Yes, I just finished it last night. I, I published it at like 3 a.m. I've been going a bit hard on it. It's been really nice to not have to edit it today. I've literally been sparing every moment I've got spare, I've been editing. Like yeah. fitting in restroom breaks and stuff. It's tough sometimes. Yeah. It's an hour and a half long. I can't wait to watch. I'm it's a long this one. Weekend. I said to Gary, you made like a movie. Almost, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. Um yeah. But there was one there was one bit of footage that I didn't get to fit in. I couldn't find a place to put it. And it was I was like trying to record, I need like a little bit more quarry background footage. And I was just like playing through the early stages of the game to get to a point where I could get the bit I wanted um, of Chris Hackett and stuff. And I wasn't really paying attention. You know when because you've all played it, right? You've all played the quarry. Yes. Yeah. Yep. You know when you're with Emma and Abigail and they're driving the little golf cart? Mm -hmm. Yes. In the very beginning, right? Yes, yeah. In the very early stages of the game. You know there's a pothole that you have to miss? Like you have to like do a quick time to avoid. Remember mm -hmm. that? Sure. I don't really remember it, but yeah. I if you hit the you. if you hit the if you hit the pothole and miss that, because I wasn't paying attention, there's also a squirrel that runs out. And then you have, there's another quick time. And if you miss that quick time, you hit the squirrel. Right? Did you know that Abigail can murder that squirrel with a giant rock? What? <laughs> no? Nope, I had no idea. I didn't it's even know so, there was a squirrel. Well, like, well, like, you hit the squirrel and the squirrel's still alive? Yeah, it's like suffering, and Emma's like, we have to put it out of its misery. What the and fuck? Then, and then you can as Abigail, Abigail go, okay. I and then she hands you a big giant rock, and you just drop it. <laughs> That makes that scene way more interesting than being like, what boys do you like? You know, yeah. it's just the, the usual kind of... Yeah, it was like, like an like actual moral conundrum. Yeah, it was really weird. I, I, I did it by accident. I was like, half an hour, I started recording it. So I was like, this is interesting. I've never seen this before. That's funny. I wonder how yeah. many moments are like that, that people are just... They're just like, meh, meh, and they just pass the QTs and... Well, yeah, never back. Yeah. But I love I love moments. when games are willing to invest time in a failure state being interesting, which is why Disco Elysium yes. is brilliant. But we could talk about Disco yeah. Elysium for like twenty fucking years. That's probably going to be a a book club game one day. Please, but... Yeah, at some point, I'd love to. I, I need to force myself to have time to play that. Oh, so good. That is, Disco Elysium is a very unusual game. That's one of the most but, unique games I've ever played. Yeah, but on, honestly, when I was doing the my video, and I was like. Kind of like, you know, ba ba balancing them both out and talking about the good points and the bad points. And then when I was just getting a bit of footage and found that, I was like, my opinion of the quarry just went back up like a bit, like more, just because it was such a. And the fact that no one in my chat had seen, knew that was a thing. None of you yeah. guys see it. Like, it's like such a no. weird Abigail murdering I, a squirrel. I, I really like the quarry, honestly, until the ending sequences. That's really the only part I have an issue with. Up until then, I think it's about as good as Until Dawn. I haven't seen your video mm. yet, Gary, but I'll be interested to see. I would love to talk it. about the quarry and Until Dawn a bit next week, or next season. Yeah, why don't we do that? We can add that on. That can be an add-on to the my to the book club. Is like also part of the homework. We have to watch Gary's video so we can talk about it next, next season. <laughs> I've started it. I haven't, I haven't gotten really? that far, though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'd love to talk about oh. it. Because I, I love both of those games, and that's like it's very rare for me to like the single player games to have actually played. All I know the you games said you played them. I was like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah so it'll, I'll actually have like the full context when I watch the video. So it might even inspire me to go. I want to do another quarry playthrough anyway. So maybe I'll do that. Oh, you should stream that. I think I will. I did last yeah. time, and it went really well. People love yeah. it. Nice. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah, people oh. love those choice based games uh, on stream yeah. for sure. Oh, I played through Detroit and like. Uh, it was like a miserable experience towards the end because people got oh, so really? weird about it. Yeah. I played oh, no. on stream. Did people ruin it? I mean, I liked the game, but they did kind of ruin it for me a little bit. What? Did, did you stream the end then? Or... I didn't, no, I didn't it, was just, it was just on oh, YouTube. Just the, oh, just YouTube it's comments. Just, well, it's like, it was fine. Like, episode one was fine. Episode two was fine. Episode three, people were getting a little... Uh, but it was mostly fine. Episode four, people started getting a little more aggressive. And it just kept going that way. Oh. And just like I don't know, I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was like the Detroit Become Human fan base found it because like nobody's really playing it these days, um, or what. But I don't know. It just was people just got really just like condescending about the choices. And I oh, that's a shame because like I, I would say Detroit Become Human I think is better than Until Dawn. Really? Like, I, yeah. Like I just was so blown. I don't know. Until Dawn's like got such a horror. Yeah, I, don't, I just appreciate, but until like, but Detroit Become Human's got such 
a good amount of choice. Like, it feels like every choice is... Until Dawn and, like, multiple playthroughs, you can start to see the illusion a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Whereas Detroit Become Human, like, I could play it again now and find new stuff that I've never experienced and have a whole different ending. Right. Yeah, yeah, because there's, like, 60 different endings or something like that, I think yeah, I read. Yeah, crazy. Or more than I that, don't... maybe. I don't think I have this as much as you, John, because you're a pretty big YouTube creator. And YouTube, you know, people can find your videos and just all sorts can happen. But I have had an experience in the past with streaming where sometimes when people are really into a game and I'm playing it for the first time, I I wish I could be, like, happy that they're so enthusiastic about it. But sometimes you can tell very quickly on stream if somebody's so, like, passionate about a game that yeah, they're going to become a problem. they're going to become a pain. Even if they're, yeah. like, really friendly and nice at first well meaning because it's yeah. like it's like at first they're just like i'm so happy you're playing this what a great game and then they're just mm. like hmm wouldn't have done that and right. then it slowly escalates bro she's just like you know you <laughs> were I supposed <laughs> to play dead it was really obvious have i have i told you guys about the worst people in the world the worst fans ever in my we already experience? talked about adult pokemon fans so what no, no 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 that's us that's all of us no we're and we're yeah we are included but no doom eternal has the worst fan base oh yeah you told me about this yeah yeah, yeah yeah i i tried streaming that game and I, I might actually just do it it's like sport you just like wait for one to show up once he starts that's, that's why i played undertale on stream like got, a couple of years ago Oh yeah, Undertale thought, was an awful experience for me too. I thought too. Doom Eternal fans were just a bunch of dudes that just like to hang out. How could they be? They're the worst. Toxic about it. The Doom, Doom Very Bros. Serious. They come in. They come in and like John said, they're like, "Well, they'll come in. Oh man, you're playing Doom. What's your experience? How many hours you got? How many times you you beat, you beat Ultra Nightmare yet? You might have, you're like, no, I'm just kind of yeah. doing my first playthrough on Nightmare here. And then there's like, okay, well, first off, first things first. Uh, there you wrong gun for this room. Wrong, that, and they, yeah. they just go oh and, and they and they, <laughs> and they just. And then you'll be like, yo, I'm, I, I got no backseat in the title, bro. Like, let's uh, <laughs> let's let me do it. And they're like, well, I, just, yeah. I mean, if you want to be here all day, I guess, I, then you can just keep using the plasma rifle then. You know, like, they get super oh condescending God. immediately. Like, they just, it's like testosterone, bro. Dude, they're so angry. Well, it's, and they're immediately angry. Oh, now I want to stream that. Well, it's like, it's like when people get into a game deep enough. It's like, I don't know, man. It's like, it's, it's like, it's like they push it and push it and push it. And so, like, and eventually the only thing that, that really interests them anymore is, like, speed runs. They want to see, like, the game being played as often as possible because they've seen everything else. They've yeah. seen just, like, a rando person play it. And then they go from, like, watching stuff like that of people making, like, video essays on the game and, like, talking about, did you notice this, like, tiny little detail that you may have missed and speed runs to, like, just some dude being like, I'm playing it for the first time. And they, like, have no patience for it at all. It's I like, the dopamine, it's like the, the, the dopamine receptors are fried from watching someone like with whimsy enjoy it for the first time. And they're just like, yeah. no, you have to be perfect they're just like, forever. They don't understand your joy. So yeah. No. It's like they see somebody, you know, speed through a room in 60 seconds and you're sitting there on minute four of your blind playthrough. And they're like, why is this guy taking so long? He's going really slow. Anyone yeah. Else? You know, there's an art to that. that I, I think a lot of people are really shockingly bad at this. Like an art of when you enjoy something letting people kind of discover it for themselves in a certain yeah. way like sometimes when i'm playing a multiplayer game with friends and i know a lot of it and they don't i deliberately won't tell them everything because i know that discovering it or feeling it out for yourself is part of the experience and i think generally yeah, definitely human beings are like really fucking shit at this actually that most people are really bad at realizing that if you overly push it on people it kind of suffocates the experience and then they don't like it because well, the whole time it was just somebody telling you how you're supposed to enjoy it, as opposed to discovering and feeling the enjoyment yourself. Yeah, definitely. People are very bad at that. So I think I, I wish more people were aware that sometimes you got to let it breathe so that people will enjoy it the same way that you've come to enjoy it now that you've spent hours on it. But a lot of people, they just can't help themselves and it has to be done a certain way and if you're doing it wrong right. and they want it i also sometimes get it with like cheesy old games where i'll be like oh my god this is so fucking bad and people are like uh, uh, but it just, how, why do you not like it it's like no i love it because it's cheesy and bad you know yeah yeah i'm all about that yeah well and, and people can get very defensive like like instantly from zero to 100 with that stuff too like um in detroit there was this one sequence that drove me nuts. It's the part where you're playing as Connor and you're interrogating an android. And oh, you can choose to go really hard. Or whatever. Yeah, 30 stab wounds or whatever he says. Um, 
and like you can choose to like go really hard on them or play it back really nice and the android has a stress level yeah and i was just like well whatever i'm just gonna do the interrogation how i would do it and so apparently i stressed out the android too much because even though it was a successful interrogation at the end the android starts like hitting their head on the desk and starting to like you know self-destruct because that you made them so stressed out um but i think it happens no matter what i don't know Anyway, and so, and then the, the police officers come in, they're like, stop doing that. And then one of the police officers is a total idiot, and he uncuffs the hand, uh, the, the android, and the android grabs his gun, shoots Connor, and then himself. And I was sitting there like, I was in shock. I was like, what the fuck? Oh, that sounds awesome. And I, and I was talking about how, like, I feel like I didn't deserve to die there, because, like, the reason I die is because this idiot police officer uncuff the android which like if he just stayed cuffed to the desk then that wouldn't have happened like if he just followed protocol and people in the comments got really defensive about it and they were just like that was your fault that you died there because you stressed out the android and i was like it doesn't matter how stressed he is if the cuffs stay on actually, you know what like, i mean that's you'll actually there's a bit in my video where i talk about that it's the idea of intentionality so i'm gonna nerd out a little bit no that's it's okay like, it didn't it didn't feel fair to you because a decision was made even though you don't feel like you had any agency over that decision. So like yeah. the example I use is Matt when he shoots the flare off because I'd done other things that led to that point. Mm -hmm. So that's that's completely legitimate, John. You're in yeah. the right. You're in the right I, to I, feel that way. I know when I'm that in the sort right. of thing happens. Yeah. I know I'm in the right because like I, I like I didn't uncuff him. I didn't give him a gun. This idiot that I had no control over did. And then yeah. people in the comments were like, well, that's just how the game works. And I'm just like, you guys are in too deep. You know, and it's like they're, they're too defensive over the game as like and just because I was like, that was kind of I didn't have a good time with that. I didn't feel like I had, you know, I deserved to die there. They're just like, no, you did because of this, this and this because they're overly familiar with the game. I'm attacking it, you know, and they're going to defend right. it. And it's my the way, fault. The way, the way a game makes you feel in your initial playthrough is important. And like, yeah, that is a fair way to react to that situation because as you said it's a, it's a game about choice and your agency and control over a situation if something happens if another stimuli comes in that you don't have control over and it ruins what you kind of were doing it's yeah. it's frustrating yeah like i don't, I mean, I don't like, mind I liked it a bit. the game i still liked it but yeah yeah it's like I, I like having some consequences but if the consequence feels too much like a leap from the choice it starts to feel unfair right. where it's like if a character's like be careful in the forest and then you do things that are really careless then yeah okay fair but when you do something where you just interrogate the android and then like you said some other random guy just uncuffs him and you're like well i didn't really i didn't make a choice that felt like it would lead up to that it felt like yeah. a leap right it's, and that's it's why like you a, yeah like if i had way. a choice like hey uncuff him if right. i told the police like, for for some reason if i did that then it would be like okay well i kind of should have seen that coming or maybe not yeah. done that he's he's stressed out we have to uncuff him so he feels or even something not yeah. direct but felt more closer to how the outcome would be you yeah. would feel less like you you need to feel culpable fuck? in the fuck ups yep. yeah and like i mean i guess fun, I, but yeah 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 i mean I we all have a fuck up out. in these games <laughs> yeah, yeah as i as i constantly no, remind people when i stream them the game. like constantly watching playthroughs where the streamer saves everyone and everyone's happy it's like don't you guys want to see sometimes what happens when you fuck up a little you know right it could be fun yeah embrace it exactly like i, I think i kind of i think i kind of like the first my blind playthrough of until dawn i saved everybody and i feel oh, like really? yeah it's it, i don't know no, I've, I've never done it with any game but that's that's the only game i've ever done it with and and I feel like ever since then people have been like, well, you did it with Until Dawn, so everybody's got to live in this one too. And I've just never been able to do it because it's it's hard. It's like almost impossible, I would say, to play these games blind and have everybody live. It's just not, and they're not designed that way either. They're choice games. Like, it's fine if Zane dies, you know. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. <laughs> think of it this way: Until Dawn is like a horror movie. What would you think of a horror movie where nobody dies and everybody yeah. lives? You'd right. be like, "That was a little low stakes." And, and, and it gives you a reason to go back and replay it as well. And sometimes you start to dislike a character, and you're like, "Yeah, Ashley, go see what that sound was. Maybe it is Jess." Isn't everyone like that with Emily? I thought that was Emily's thing. No, uh, she has to survive. People I've who never, are wrong are like that about Emily. Even, even when I played it to try and kill everybody, Emily survived. 
Sam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can't, I can't kill her. And Jess, Jess and Emily, I can't kill. Hmm. Emily was right the whole time. It's, it's so hard to kill Mike. You basically can only kill him at the end, right? And until dawn, I yeah. killed like, Mike though. I was really bad at that game. But he, he can only he, die at the end. I'm pretty yeah, sure. Him, him and Sam are like can't die. That's the thing. When Doug says I was really bad at that game, the first thing I thought was, "Oh my god, I want to watch how much you suck at that." Because it would be interesting to see also, what it's what? like when somebody's not like. Also, I saved everyone. You weren't bad at the game. Yeah, you weren't bad because at the game. yeah, you weren't even bad. Because no, no, no. you, you no, can't be bad it, yeah. at those kind of games. You can't be True, bad exactly. No, exactly. The designers have designed all these choices for you to yeah do what you want. I, when I played it, Sam was the only one who lived. Final girl. I killed, I killed, one too many. I killed. Yeah, I, I, killed <laughs> I killed everybody. But that's just I killed I everybody. Mean, that that doesn't mean that you're bad at the game though. Like you're right. bad at like arbitrary choices that the developers decide what happens. Like yeah. I yeah. mean and they and like it's like in that game when you're Sam and you're running from the killer and you have to run or hide. I was just like I instantly didn't really care about that choice when that happened because I was like the developers just decide if you hide and the killer finds you or you hide and the killer moves on to the next room. Like I don't know what's going to happen. It's completely yeah. out of my hands. And that's kind of how a lot of those choices are. So, like, I don't think you can be bad at it. It's, it's yeah. uh, to yeah. certain points, arbitrary. I really appreciate you guys all protecting me in this. In this like, no, I, no, I, I no just, gen genuinely I believe that. Saying, oh, I, yeah. I, know, I know I was just saying it flippantly. I didn't really feel like bad about it, but thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that reinforcement. I feel. It's, I think it's I because very, there is a, there is a group good. of gamers out there that do will, will say, like, you're bad at this game. And it's like, yeah. no, it's a. That's not. You're looking at the game in a really well, yeah. weird way. Because yeah. well, I absolutely. a skill game. I absolutely I think enjoyed sure. it, and I didn't feel bad about the way the game yeah. turned out. Like I didn't feel guilty for I mean, yes, only one person living. I was like, "Oh, I guess I'm pretty bad at this." Because they all, as I said, so. your your playthrough sounds entertaining. Yeah, people love people loved it. Yeah, it's yeah. a game dev problem as well. I think where too many games are designed where if you do the good thing and you save people, you get more story, you get more interaction. But if you mm -hmm. don't, it's like that person died, and then that part of the plot just disappears. So it feels like a punishment. And I think I understand why games are like that because it's hard to invest a lot of resources into something that a lot of people won't see, such as killing a squirrel with a rock. But games that do fail your states in a way that feels like it's not a punishment, it's like you get a different type of reward. Mm -hmm. It's hard to do, but that's why I really respect Disco Elysium, where a lot of the most interesting things that happened to me in that game happened when I failed a skill check. It wasn't just like, you can get extra plot if you succeed. You failed, okay, the quest just ends. You did, the person's gone now. I think, so, do you think that's why people like Baldur's Gate and like Dungeons and Dragons type scenarios? Because like, we have, I mean, I haven't got that far into Baldur's Gate because we've only played a bit, you know, but I'll always think of the the windmill situation where yes. like, yeah. there was like a... I, would, yeah, a, I made it to the windmill. I think we all yeah. made it to the windmill. Yeah, the Barkus yeah. Root. Yeah, there's like the a, the, the little windmill and like we were like all these monsters to, to save him and then Tally ran in there and then pulled the switch the wrong way and just sped the windmill up, and then he went flying. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Like, Tally <laughs> just ran in. He wasn't paying attention because Tally is like the himbo of the group, and he just like sped up the windmill by mistake by pulling a lever, and then the gnome got caught on it, and then was like flung away and killed. But that was like one of the funniest yeah, fucking things that happened. Yeah, that's so, really funny. Yeah. How, and that how was like a failure state that created like. Hmm? We didn't get very far. We no. got to that one place, the one that's like made with rock, and it's all the dwarves, and you have to blow up a wall to find someone i don't remember what that is oh no like in the big fortress like the big we killed Room a man that they were like, the wall yeah they were like somebody's in there and then you had to like blow up a wall to get in there yourselves oh are you are yeah. you in the underdark is that where that is yes, yes that's it like, yeah, that's just it. beginning okay. to explore okay. the underdark but it, we kind of the scheduling became a problem because getting a bunch of adults together consistently can yeah be difficult. i understand and then oh, yeah, we just sort of shame, i'd love to play it i'd like mm, also, I mean, Sonic, I love I'd you. Book time, I'd book time to replay it. Sonic, I played through it, so he was like, "Yeah, do this. Yeah, do that." I was like, "Oh no, he already played it." I feel like uh, I, I've got a prima strategy guy beside me the and whole Tal time. Tal and Tally's yeah. a skip dialogue kind of person. <laughs> they don't care. Oh come on! You can't skip dialogue at Baldur's Gate Three. That's, That's like all the fun. I felt, I felt, I felt point, guilty yeah. sometimes when I would hold us all up, be like, "I want to know what's going on." Yeah. I didn't oh my restart. God. I, I fucked up when I did. I mean, it. I, I would suggest playing it solo. It's a great solo experience, honestly. I've been yeah, thinking I, about streaming it, like taking a day a week and just being like, sorry, Doug, go. Oh, no, your audience fine. would love to see who you try and romance, Gary, I bet. Yeah. 
Your audience, like, that's like Baldur's Gate is fucking Stardew on steroids, man. Your community would love it. Like, they would maybe, love maybe that. I should, yeah. I'll tell you one. I, I know who I'm not dating. Who? Who would that be? Asterion, or whatever oh. his name is. Oh. I'm an Asterion hater too. Yeah. Okay. I hate yeah. Him. Okay. Are we all, do we all hate Asterion? Because I hate Asterion. So I remember before the game came out, I was like, Gary, there's a twink here for you. Asterion. I think you might like him. And then when I actually started playing it, I was like, I fucking hate this guy. What about yeah. you guys? And then I all hate, of you were like, yeah, this guy sucks. You know, <laughs> and he literally sucks. He's a vampire, but I hate I hate, I hate yeah. Asterion and I hate Gale, too. Gale drives me fucking nuts, too. Oh, really? I don't, I don't I like, I don't Gale. like Gale. I, I hate Gale. I, I kind of like everyone I else. Gale. I think I like Asterion more than Gale. That's how much I don't like Gale. Ooh, so, damn. Sorry, I don't know why. I don't know what it is about him. This, maybe this, I will this say, the vibe, that, dude. Well, Although I'm saying I don't like Asterion, I did somehow manage to accidentally start romancing him still when we were playing. It's quite... It's I think crazy. originally it was quite He's difficult to do that. Secretly yeah. likes Asterion. Yeah. They I'm like terrible. the game. When, when so I, it doesn't happen so much. Like, I was playing Coral Island today, and I'm just working on, like, getting everybody to ten hearts, because I've romanced... I'm dating everyone that I can. And Stardew, I always date everybody. I've got you a bad poor. habit. I am, yeah. When it comes to these kind of games, I just love romance. Yeah, Aww. polygamy. That's kind of cute, actually. <laughs> what a romantic, kind of a pro, kind of promiscuous, Aww. more than romantic, yes, yeah, yeah. really. I like, I like the. Word, I think romantic makes it seem better, though. <laughs> yeah, it makes you sound like less of a dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gary's trying to understand how it feels to have love in your heart. Yeah. <laughs> Compared wow. to the quarry, yeah, you kill a, a you kill a squirrel with a rock. I <laughs> loved it. <laughs> the quarry's brilliant. Can you all, can you all guess? <laughs> Can you guess who I've romanced in my BG3 playthrough? Oh, um, what's her name? Laziel? No, no, not... Uh, no, what, da the is oh, the demon? No, not, no, I think John... Shadowheart? 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 I think John Shadowheart. 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 Yeah, Shadowheart. No, I, I think Carlac. Nah. Senna's right, Carlac. Oh, is it Carlac? Yes. Yeah. Wow. I did the number one John fan. I did start with Shadowheart, and I got... I could have I could have gone all the way with her, but I was like, you know what? I gotta go with the, you know, six foot demon girl. Let's go. <laughs> Dummy mommy. Yeah. Caught on fire. You gotta get caught on fire. You need that yeah. To be oh, hot. Yeah. I think because when we were playing it together, like, we, like, I think anyway, it works multiplayer. Is it everyone has to kind of focus on one person? I think if I'm focusing on everyone, oh, even I don't know who I'm gonna go with. Maybe you'll oh, I should, I should play stream this. to find I should out. play this. I should stream no, you this. Should. It's, really it's a very I good would, single player. Gary, I would watch you. I'd sure. watch you. I'd watch you anyways, but I'd watch you. I'd be interested to watch you play it specifically. All right. I, I think I would enjoy that. I you gotta find your it. you gotta find your Haley, Gary. That is true. Yeah. Actually, this is a good idea. I need this because I have another YouTube idea. Mm. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you after the podcast, maybe. Our next, next, our next I'll, I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you tonight as well, because like it's part like we we discussed like a little bit of it. Next universal picture. <laughs> it'll be shorter. My God, I'm not doing another hour and a half for a while. I don't oh, you, you, no. you think it'll be shorter right now, but I bet it won't be. I've been telling <laughs> Gary, like, here's Toolmaker or Game Maker's Toolkit, wherever that website, the sorry, that YouTube channel is called, that does like these really popular game dev videos. And I was like, Gary, he often takes like one question about a game and he does that. So it's like a 20, 30 minute long video. But all of Gary's videos so far are like, Here's every thought I've ever had about Bloodborne for like no, no, 90 no. minutes. The, the amount I you're cut exhausted. out. You're exhausted. The you're, amount I cut out, you wouldn't believe. <laughs> like, I love your passion, but I feel like you're working yourself really hard here. Like, oh, yeah. You're stressing yourself out. You can make I a feel series good now, out of though. That. Yeah, you could cut it up into multiple videos. Yeah. This is a thought. Gary's oh. like, no, I can't. I, it has to be. It has, has to be, be my magnum opus. I mean, yeah. if, if you do, if you do all in one video, you'll get more watch time for the algorithm, so that might be True. better. Yeah, so, I'm not really focused on that. I, if, yeah, so if I, I admire you. you I just, just as your friend, I'm looking out for you a little. That you don't drive yourself insane. I appreciate that. You sound like you work really hard. I do. I think. Yeah, I could work. I could work hard. No, you work hard. You work. Hard. You could always work harder. Oh, this is getting too nice. Yeah. Fuck you, you guys. Always, you can always work harder, Gary. Yeah, in my thank opinion. you, John. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing right now? <laughs> you're working right now. So working on that video. Lazy. <laughs> it may feel like work for you, Gary, right now. <laughs> no, a bit. lovely time. Good. Are you um, having a lovely time, audience? I hope so. You better be. 
we have we have comments. gone through two hours of this podcast. And we have not talked about Dead by Daylight at all. You want to skip it? Who cares, dude? <laughs> <laughs> I, I played I played Animal Crossing and I played Sonic on stream this week. Who fucking cares, bro? Like, Doug's yeah. saying that. Doug, I know, Doug, dude. Heart, I think my heart just grew. Yeah, <laughs> this heart grew I, ten sizes that day. I'm, I'm becoming that guy, dude. Like I literally retweeted the fucking PTB updates, being like, "Wow, this is trash." This, like, who cares? Like I don't know. It's just, <laughs> Did you hashtag into the fog? No, no. Hashtag we shirt my survivor. I'm not gonna try to talk you guys out of talking about it, but like I, I don't know. No, I think I'm the only one regularly playing DVD still. Um, and I will tell you that I am playing it a lot more than I would be because I have a contractual obligation to play it for noise. Like that's mm. real. Like I would have, oh, okay. I, would, I would end. I would, I'm not saying I'm only playing DVD. I do still enjoy DVD. I still, I'm not, it's not full sell, but I like, I have a, I have an obligation I have to meet. So mm. there are times when I would be ready to move to a different game that I'm not doing that because I have a contractual obligation to stream hours of DVD, but I've been playing this game since the game came out and I don't know if it's ever been more, difficult to to have fun playing and again think, that's that's my job as a content creator is to enjoy it find a way to make it fun and enjoy it and, and engage with my audience but killer doesn't feel good survivor doesn't feel good and i really hope that that changes when the update comes out and more people come back to the game i think my mm. worry when you say that is i think we were saying the same thing about a year ago on the podcast i think we were when saying Skull, the same Skull merchant was out around this time yeah we we're like i don't think the game's ever been worse and then yeah. it's just it's never felt like it's never like oh it's it's, it's finally back to it no so it's always just continued to go i think it's never been worse it's never been worse it's never been worse and it's I like mean, well, it, yeah it's it's like it, I, I mean th there's cool things like it's like you can look at it on paper and it's like man we got nicholas cage we got chucky we got xenomorph we got... the new yeah. update looks great we're excited about the new update because the killer is interesting the map is cool um the fundamental issue turns into just the game isn't really that fun to play even with all the cool stuff right. well, if you look if you look at like when well, pyramid head came in or wesker or nemesis or these like big things where it was like the game blew up and it grew it grew in size i don't feel like it's growing from chucky xenomorph nicholas cage alan white like none of these big chapters are growing it at all because no one cares anymore i think i think dvd is doing a good job of um Introducing like new fun dynamic characters, like you know, uh, it's cool to see Zemo from the game. It's cool to see Nicolas Cage. It's cool to see Chucky. You know, Sable is a neat survivor. The Unknown is a neat original killer. But I think the problem now is not really the characters; it's the gameplay. So, like you were saying, it's like all the all these new characters in the in the world aren't gonna make the the basic gameplay and the meta change. You know. I would, I would disagree so. a little bit. I actually don't think... I think the game... If you, I would argue the game's in the best shape it's ever been. Mm. But I think the player base has never been worse. Like, I love Dead by Daylight, but I hate the players. I have no interest in, like, right. trying to have fun with these people that just want to do... They just want to sweat the doors open and do the gens as quickly as possible when I play Killer. Um, and teabag and just yeah. be obnoxious and then be rude in the post-game. Or when I'm playing Survivor, just getting tunneled out immediately because it's much easier to have a 3v1 like it's just everyone's just trying to win the game's not balanced it's not good enough to be that sweaty in it in my opinion i just it's just you know it's just deflating to play in my opinion but mm -hmm. i got left i got left on hook today five separate times to die five <laughs> separate times yeah. See, there you go. What? <laughs> <laughs> one guy, one guy was doing a gen like eight meters away, and just watched me die. And he's, it's. I've had that happen, yeah. And it's one of those things where sucks. it's like, and I, and I know, I know people will God. say like a skill issue or whatever, right? But it's like you just feel like, like Gary said, like I don't know what, what killers are getting my survivor matches. Like when I go into a match solo, what killers are getting that match? Because those guys are playing like they're playing against the survivors that I play against, but the survivors that I'm playing with are not playing like they versed that killer. It's, right. And like you said, people just get, it's like every match, somebody gets turbo tunneled or proxy camped and your team either is. And like, I, I had a few games in a row today where like my teammates were actually really cracked. And so we just won really easily. We just shit on gens and everybody got out and it was like super simple. I feel like here's my, this is, I'm sorry. This is, this is my take on dead by daylight, dead by daylight in its current form relies on survivors being bad to be balanced mm -hmm. and like the only way the game is true. balanced is is if 
the survivors are bad. And then it, then it's, but then if they're too bad, then it's imbalanced in the other direction. So like if every survivor was insane, right. like survivors would never lose and they would have to buff kill it. But because every survivor, the majority of the survivors are mediocre or worse, it like maintains this semblance of balance. And what happens is play, players go in solo and their teammates are just maybe not, I mean, where they are, it's just miserable. Basically, yeah. MMR now needs, needs to start taking into account like the, the solo queue experience, and it gets yeah. to a point where it's like, what's the point? No. The wins aren't thing- fun anymore. The wins aren't fun. Like, the wins, you just go in and do gens and barely see the killer and you get out. I would right. make three changes to the game. Two yeah. that I think would be more popular and one that's more of a personal choice for me. I think killers should be judged for how many hooks they get rather than how many kills. I think survivors should be judged for how many people escape not necessarily whether or not they escape themselves. Mm. Huge. That's I agree. So that's huge. Yeah. So I agree like, too. if if three people get out because you sacrifice yourself, you should get some sort right. of reward for that. Yeah, um, I agree. And then this one, I don't think would be as popular, but I do wish that there was some visual way to see your skill level, like an MMR system or something. I, like oh, I think everyone would love that. I think, yeah, I think, I think MMR, I've been yeah, advocating yeah. for most, that. Yeah. Most people would love that. I think just, I think ninety eight percent of people would want their MMR visible. Like, I think the two percent would be the streamers that pretend they're good at the game that aren't actually good. There, they yeah, there want, needs they to be something. Clothes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I want to I want to get it away from just like tunnel somebody out of the game so that they die because people are playing in a way that makes their MMR go up anyway, but it's invisible, and that's one of the reasons why I, I kind of struggle to stay in that game. It's like I like having like an overall goal. Yeah. Where it's like my overall goal is to sort of see how my skill is and see if I'm good or not and try my best. And I think the game has become more rank competitive. One was that? Yeah. 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 But it's. It's they need to weird. make playing compa- like playing the game well. They need to encourage playstyles that are more fun as part of playing the game well. So like if you're going for hooks rather than necessarily just kills, then it's more easy for the survivors to still have fun even if the killer is playing to win, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. Do you know what they could do? You know how I'm gonna bring up Heroes of the Storm again, but one of the best things about that in ranked mode was if you got to a certain place, you would win a cosmetic mount. That would be like the prize for competing in that and like playing yeah, well. Yeah, I remember that. that League does that too. Cool. Yeah, like if you yeah. Get gold or above at the end of the season, you get like a skin. Because like yeah. DB's weird at the moment because people play really sweaty for that invisible MMR number that no one can see because they feel like their their brain suddenly have to make that number go up even though they can't see it. But the actual objective is just to kind of do the rift. Yeah. 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 yeah true. Like the 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 battle pass that they have is really the only motivation to keep playing. In terms of, because like, you get blood points for the grade, but like, I mean, you're kind of swimming in blood points these days. And they've made changes to the blood web that have made things all cheaper and stuff. So, I feel like people aren't really pining for blood points like they used to. Which um, like new which players good. need them because new players like the grind. Oh, I yeah, would, I wouldn't true. want to start DVD now. That's true. I'll that's say, true. I'll say I agree with you, um, Sino, on the. So identity V has a rank has a ranked mode that's like separate of the quick play mode right and that's how that ranked works like a two two survivors get out it's a tie mm. and and basically you get rank points on on killer and survivor if two get out like you get a, you, you get think less... about it like a team thing yeah so the whole team gets a little bit even if two people die the whole team gets more if three people or four people get out right you get more points for more escapes but like a two a two out is a win for both sides it's like a, they call it a tie, but both sides get ranked. Points. Get a little bit like you're you're and performed well so enough. It, it, against it feels amazing people. on Survivor because like if you give a, if you lose if you know if only two get out, but like you performed well enough to get two out, you're like hey, I didn't lose. That feels great. And if you sacrifice yourself, three get out, you get the win, you get extra rank points. Then even the person who died gets extra rank points. Feels great. The problem is that it doesn't change the way the killers work. They still just tunnel and camp people out right. to get right. kills. Because yeah. the speed the speed of the game is crazy on it, and but so. I think if you did that in DVD, it could solve a lot of the problems. Because like in a lot of the time, when I'm doing my community Swift, for example, I I will gladly die. Like, like three others get out, I'll die. It feels like I've played well. I know my MMR goes down, but it feels like we won, and it would be nice if it was like more identity B style in like, terms of. It's insane to me with with DVD. Your MMR only matters for matchmaking. Because you don't know what it is, right? You don't see it. Yeah. You don't get a reward. You don't get a rank. It only matters for matchmaking. And once you hit the soft cap, you can never go below it. Yeah. So what? What's it's like the a fucking feeling. point? What's the fucking point? 
Right. Yeah. There's no, it doesn't feel very rewarding by a certain mm. point. And that's one of the reasons why I don't play DVD more. It's like, I don't, I can't really chart progress and I don't really feel like I'm aiming yeah. for something tangible. Yeah. Like, like with League, I can play League basically until my body shuts down and is like, you need to go to bed right now because you've been Same. up for forever. Like, but... Yeah. But with DVD, it's like, I last about an hour and a half before I'm like, okay, well, eh, eh. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I think, and, I think, really and, I, and I think we used to last longer when the games were more fun, right? They felt more fun. They yes. kind of felt more like yeah, you had like ups and downs. Like I don't know. I guess it's just even like the wins don't feel great anymore. Like I'm on both sides, like you, and nobody's happy anymore. And I, and I will say, like the game is so heavily. Like, if you're playing Survivor, which is easier on stream, so I play Survivor most of the time. Same. Um, because like I can chill out and I can talk about ice cream and stuff. Um, I was killing up. You're focused. Yes, but when you're getting matches, and most of the time, like, even though there's like what thirty plus killers, thirty five or whatever, thirty three, mm -hmm. doesn't feel like that. It feels like there's about five or six killers, and you just see them over and over again, which just happens to be most of the most miserable killers to go up against. So you're seeing a lot. You know, like I, yeah. I miss, I miss Wesker. I don't see him anymore. I see Blight. I see uh, Skull Merchant. I see Billy all the time now. You know, it's like. Ugh. I think, all the West, I think all the Weskers went to Billy because he's easier. Honestly, oh, I think I so. That I would make sense because Wesker's vanished. I haven't seen a Wesker in so long, and I, I see Billy's every third or fourth game. So yeah. Billy, 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 Billy. And then occasionally you see like a different kid, like, oh, it's a plague. Oh, it's a, you know, yeah. even a clown is like a bit different these type, these days. And then they just tunnel. You go, oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, they enjoy the interaction, and they kind of, and they kind of, and they kind of have to if they want to win against a lot of teams. And then it's just like, but it's, it's, yeah, it's a real. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how they solve it. I just think that like, maybe if they, do, if they do ranked and unranked, maybe could like help. That's really good on mobile, but yeah, you open up an entire other can of worms. So, so the mobile DVD has ranked and unranked queue. Yeah. Yep. I really, no... I really think DVD could do with that. Honestly, yep. like so many other games do it now. It just and there's no, there's naturally. no DC penalty on quick play, so that like, you kind of police the sweaties in quick play by oh. being like, okay, I'll oh, just perfect. Because like I remember when yeah. when they turned off DC penalties for a while, and this was when Nurse was at her peak, most miserable. Like everyone was just getting fed up with Nurse, and like everyone just started DCing against Nurse because they turned off penalties for like two weeks. And I remember that. I remember all the nurse mains on Twitter getting real upset. They're like, I can't play DBD. No one, oh, that no one was just so DCs funny. against me. I saw, then, I saw some of those tweets. Yeah. So they had to stop playing nurse because they couldn't play DBD because no one would play like, against them. I, th I, I, I legitimately think some nurse mains quit that month. I remember that. Good. Yep. Like quit the game and haven't been back. But yeah, like, so like being able to just like drop out of a match, be like, this isn't fun. Like skull yeah. merchants most of the time, they're grumpy. I, the amount of comments I get on my profile is like, this person just gave up. It's like, yeah, well, I had someone DC straight away and I didn't want to play. If you play yeah. Skull Merchant and you track down everybody that DCs against you to leave a comment on their Steam profile, like, what the fuck are you doing with your life? That's... Well, they, were, they were playing Skull Merchant before then, so... That's true, but it's like, you, you've, you've already decided to play the most miserable killer in the game. Doug. <laughs> I play her today. Also, also to play Devil's Advocate on the Skull Merchant thing, she's not that bad anymore. People just they're just like she's just damage good. She's no, she's, you could she's take like, the Skull Merchant. You could give the Skull Merchant Wesker's kit, and people would still DC on her. She it is. I'll grant you, she's balanced. You can win against her, but it's a long match still, and it's not interesting. But None of the loops are fun. Yeah, again, this is my, a, like like every problem always comes down to this is a solo queue problem. She gets dunked on is, yeah. by teams, but solo queue. She oh, actually, right. like, you have to rely on three other people to not be fucking dumb, so good luck. Yeah. And as soon as you load into a game solo queue, it's the Skull Merchant, like, it's who's going to give up first. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, like, as a Skull Merchant, why are you spending time, like, tracking down everybody who DCs yeah. against you? Like, what the fuck? You DC'd against me? What's a thank of all? <laughs> <laughs> I've literally, I've literally, had, people my, I've literally <laughs> had people in my, I've literally had people in my chat say, like, I play Skull Merchant because of how much people hate them. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah, just that's a, that's a mindset. So just yeah, just lean into it. You, yeah, why 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 like take, stop take and interrogate run. everybody? Like why'd you DC? I don't I lo understand. Lo lo I love the what open rate so high. What about my iPhone? Yeah, it's because people just go next. <laughs> what about on my first phone? Yeah, no. <laughs> what about my iPhone? Nobody cares about my phone. Books over kills. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, that was a great. I'm a mix over kills guy. I've been it was saying a really that great, for years. a really great original I've idea saying from Cenobites. I've been saying. Yeah. I've been saying that since the beginning. Hooks over kills. 
But in fairness, it's it, is like a, it is like a common sense. I mean, fix. It, yeah, I mean, like, I, I, I agree. I agree you know, with hooks over kills, but. I, again, as a person who's been playing the game forever, right? Like, back in the day when the rank system was the Eerie grade, like Eerie 1, rank yeah. 1, rank yeah. 1 was the best, rank 20 was the worst, everybody reset. And, like, for a while, they had the killer cube and the survivor cube for how you pipped, and you could, like, complicated formula but you could like you could get a pip you could get a pip as killer without killing anybody you could rank up right in the old in the old ranking system without killing anybody and that yeah. was the best i think the game ever was because like oh i agree you would know when you won and you would know when you lost and so it's like people would be able you'd be able to feel like i only got a 1k but i pipped and so it's like whatever i pipped like i had a good yeah. game and that was actually dope because that way you could like you had a win condition because now you don't have a win condition anymore no one cares about kill about pips anymore because it's just a grade that goes up and never goes down and eventually you get points for it it means nothing and anyone who plays enough will get to eerie one eventually because you can't derank an entire rank the so old system was better like having to rebuild yourself better. up back yeah. to rank yeah. one and then yeah. just it back down when and... you think about it like the old system had a way to reward perfect. you even if you died or if you didn't get a lot yeah. of kills because if you ran somebody and did tons of gens but then eventually sacrificed yourself for three mana you would probably still pip because yeah. it had the four categories and it also had a visual MMR system where you tried to get to Iridescent 1 every month. Like, yeah. basically, it was, it was bearer before. It was yeah. My, my was, theory... Oh, sorry. Go, John. I was just saying, there was, like, the whole thing, you know how everybody's scared of P100 lobbies now? Uh, it was, like, rank 1 lobbies were like, oh, my God, they're all red ranks, you know? That especially, was like, especially if it was, like, four or five days in and you all of a sudden just, like, you're playing exactly. killer. It's, like, four days in, you got all rank 1s. You're like, oh, fuck, man. It's time yeah, to play. These guys are these guys, these guys play, bro. Yeah. But, but at least you can like, prepare what? for it. You can prepare. You'd be like, oh God, these guys are going to be tough. I got to be ready. Yeah. Do you, now it's like, who knows? You get four P100s and then they just suck. P100s right? usually yeah. suck. Yeah. Do you remember John, so Gary? I don't know if you did this, Doug, but the feeling when you hit Iridescent 1 for the first time. Did you tweet about it? I remember making a tweet being like, my journey. I I now I'm I finally decent at it. the game. Yeah. I, I think, think I, I did. I was yeah. right. It was a big deal for me because yeah, it took yeah, a lot to one finally one get there. Yeah. yeah, it did because like My... it was legitimately kind of hard to pip consistently in solo queue up there. We would have to like swift sometimes to to chain them together. Because like, but it was cool, wasn't it? Was no, it you're like whatever. Was it separate yeah. for killer? It was separate for killer and survivor, wasn't it? Yes, it, it was. Yeah, yeah, first, yeah, I was. I was gonna say I think I made a big deal out of my first rank one survivor because I didn't play survivor for the longest time. Yeah. I think yeah, yeah. I think I had the opposite. Like I got to rank one survivor, and I was like, "This is cool," but my killer was like a journey. Oh, I, I remember... yeah. Rank one killer was hard. Yeah, and yeah. I got it on pig, I think, because I became like that was when I was like a pig main properly. Yeah, and I, th and I pushed for it, and I I got to rank one. I remember like I was so happy when I finally hit it. Same. It was, like, dropping those pips every now. Oh, so oh, so so difficult. Yeah. And to bring it back to what we talked about at the beginning, when I hit Iridescent 1, I made a tweet being like, my journey, and in my head, there was like, people were applauding. It was like the end of Evangelion, everyone was clapping. I was like, I did it! Woo, I feel vindicated. Like, I've gotten better at this game. done it! <laughs> the rank one pyramid head the main! The rank one pyramid head main! Well, it's but like, that that's, and that's what fun. you want in video games. You want that feeling. You do. And Bro. DVD no longer has that feeling because the, the new grade system, meaningless. Yeah, it's just nothing. It's just nothing. Yeah. Well, I, time I, rank up to get, I get to rank one, don't even realize. I got rank one for the first time, January 31st, 2017. Nice. That yeah. was Congrats. like... <laughs> yeah, that was on Killer. I don't know what I got on Survivor. Oh, that's probably was. like three years before I got mine. <laughs> and I got rank one for the first time on Survivor, October 2017. So it took me it took me nine months from rank one killer to rank one survivor. It used to be such a mission. You actually like, it yeah, was, and, I remember, yeah. And I remember I remember being like, I'm gonna go for uh, rank one survivor this season. I'm gonna go yeah. for it. Yeah. I, to, like, I remember for like it. I used to play this game so much I would hit rank one on both and then reset yeah. and hit rank one on both again. That used to yeah. happen every month. It was like a fun little climb every month. Like, let's see if I can do it again. And then yeah. it would like change Rank from month to month. Sides since the beginning. <laughs> Although I guess back then you didn't get reset to 20. You got reset to like purple nine but, or whatever. But I, yeah. But, still. I, but I would say it was harder still. Yeah. It was. But more rewarding. Yeah. You have to be kind of more consistent, which is how a lot of ranked games work, right? Where it's like you have to consistently perform semi well. And there was no prize, right? You didn't get anything for it. You didn't no. even get blood points back then. You just yeah, got to was, be rank one. It was just like, you yeah, be rank, rank one. one. 
Yeah. It's weird. So that was better without having to give you a prize. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, because it, it's because it kind of meant something. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. even, at the time, yeah. even at the time, you know, I remember people that have been playing DVD for a long time would be like, rank one means nothing. But like, if you weren't very good at the game or you were new, it meant a lot. And now I feel like they just don't really have anything like that. But there is, there really, there really is nothing that means anything anymore. That's yeah. why I, within, I get bored really quick now. Yeah. And I think that like, I think that's maybe why I'm starting to lose my passion is the more that I start to realize that like none of this matters. Nothing matters. Like I get rank one both sides. I get eerie one both sides every season just from playing, which gives me blood points to put into other characters that I probably won't play. I play like yeah. kind of the same three or four. And yeah. everybody's just mad all the time and you can't, I don't know. It's... Yeah, the amount of the DVD community that I am muted at this point. Yeah. It's just I, don't, I don't want to hear their shitty opinions complaining and, about everything. And then, and then like, our, our Bastion is, like, game modes, and then the last game mode was just miserable. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't fun. They really need to get a different modifier out that's better than that lights out mode. I mean, my plan going forward is I'm just going to play the updates. Yeah, like I'm, I'm definitely playing this next week when uh, Sable and the Unknown come out. I'm definitely gonna play. I well, gotta see those cosmetics for Sable. Let's go. What you got? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I also think that another big problem, uh, and I think that we, if you tracked like, old seasons of Spine Show, I think that like the the longer you get into an update cycle, the worse the game gets because the more casual yes. fun havers, the more people start to stop playing, and the only people that are still playing are angry right. Twitter, Reddit, sweaty yeah. like. I always think about this. It's like, who is playing this game when I'm playing this game? I'm playing at like four in the morning Pacific on a Wednesday. Like, who's playing right now? Well-adjusted individuals. People, people who play the game, right? Yeah. yeah. People who are yeah. in control of their life and in a good place mentally yeah. and spiritually. Exactly. <laughs> mentally and spiritually. Yeah. So, so again, I think it always happens. That a chapter comes out and there's new stuff and a bunch of people come back or like an event happens. A bunch of people come back. and Because like the, the first week of an event is always dope and the last week of an event is always like miserable. I think yeah. it's just like it's a player cycle thing. Yeah, so, I think we'll have like, yeah. fun for a few weeks. And kind then... of go back to what I said a bit before. Like DVD's great, the players suck. It's, yeah, it's yeah. like DVD has never been better and never been worse. Weirdly, yeah. you know, well, there's like a kind of weird like, dichotomy. It's like I feel like there's more resources and tools that the game has given you now to have fun than ever before, but the players just kind of ignore them and sweat instead. This is kind of almost a little reminiscent of when we were talking about the new internet and the old internet it's never worked better but it's lost something yeah as wow. a result and we can never really go back I, did i ever mention we you can guys never go I, back well because i was in a chat and somebody was like talking about what if they brought out classic dvd as a as a, as a game mode and there was a i'm not going to name names there was like a prominent streamer who was like oh i'll tell you right now if they had classic dvd i'd be doing a 12-hour stream and i was like i, I was, was it you and no <laughs> I would just do, I'm I'd just do kidding, that anyways. Yeah, I'd twelve hour anyways. streams is yeah. you when I think yeah. of that. But. but no, it was it was a Survivor main and like a, a very prominent Survivor yeah. main. And I and I was like out loud. I said, "No, you fucking wouldn't," because you would get about an hour in and all the killers would stop playing. Yeah, because if you if you had the if you had the maps and the palettes and the mechanics no. of old DVD with the current skill Infinite. set, decisive yeah. yeah. strike. No all killer. Time. Yeah, nurse old would, would strike. definitely get it. old nurse, brand new part. <laughs> Yeah. Nurse would be it. Nurse would be the only killer that could even get a down. You would not yeah. down somebody with a raid. No. As a killer. You would just they would just there literally was twice as many pallets. Yeah. There's no way. And shack. Like classic DVD was not was only fun because we were all bad. Yeah. And we're True. still all bad. Everybody's still all bad, but we're just bad in a different way. True. Yeah. I don't feel I don't feel like it's worth me trying to get good. Nothing will change. I literally yeah. have had that exact same thought, Lloyd. I was like, dude, I could learn check spots. I could learn all this stuff and become an insane looper. And what will I get? Eerie one faster? Yeah. I'll get more exactly. escapes on stream. Like, no one in my stream cares if I die or live. They probably want to see me die more. You know? What's yeah. the point? It's like, at least in other games like League, you know, your border changes. You get like an extra skin. You know, yeah. there's like little. You feel something. You get, yeah, you, you, get, you, something. get the per you get the personal satisfaction of hitting a rank you've never hit. Like when I rank up in Pokemon Unite, I feel awesome. I'm like, yeah. I feel. I, I have veteran one, dude. I'm like right on the edge of Ultra. Like I'm right there, dude. And like when yeah. I hit that, I'll feel so good. Where can I replicate that feeling in DVD? 
Well, it's like even just winning rounds sometimes in a game. Like a lot of DVD, as you said earlier, Doug. When I win now, it's usually I just walked out. Yeah. When I yeah. lose, it's usually I've just been face camped or something. Like it's like, yeah. what am I supposed to feel here? Except Where's the thrill? Boredom. Where's yeah. the yeah? I I do miss being like chased out, well, injured. Somebody buy a box for me. We both make it out. Yeah, you yes. know the crowd goes you know wild. What? And I had a play like that today, and we were like, what an "Idiot!" Like, what a dumb. Yeah, no, yeah. It's like you know, it's like you know, you don't yeah. feel anything anymore. You're just like, "Was this the pyramid head?" No, the pyramid head, it was the pyramid head. You were watching, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where it's just like, "Wow, way to go, dude!" No, I can't believe you fucked that up. Yeah, Bless him. He, he was going for M twos. Yeah, he was. He hit two really nasty ones on me in early game, so he yeah. thought he could do it again. And then I realized, oh no. I was just good. You did really well in that loop. Thank um, you. But yeah, DVD. I felt I felt more in my seven hour playthrough of Sonic Sonic Superstars than I felt in DVD in months. Like, see now I now I want to play that Super, Sonic Superstars game. The personal accomplishment of beating that last boss was better than anything I felt in DVD it. in years. Yeah. Mm. Like I've been playing Hitman, and I've been having so much fun with Hitman. John. Oh, sorry. I was going to ask Doug if he'd ever played any Souls games before. I've played Dark Souls 1 up to Blight Town, and I have Elden Ring on my to-do list. Oh, right okay. So, so I feel like if if you were like feeling really satisfied after being a tough boss, the Souls games would be the games yeah, for you to check yeah. out. Yeah. I enjoyed Dark Souls. I played it on stream. That was another one that had some kind of insufferable people that would swing in when you yep. were playing. Yep. But... Um, on the overall, I liked it. I got to like Blight Town, and then I stopped streaming it, which made I stop playing it. So, Fellas, I do want to revisit. This sounds like another good conversation in the making, but we're almost three hours of chat at this point. You're right. Yeah. Well, so we should maybe save it for the next season. <laughs> oh, Kimmy's home. <gasps> yeah, we should. We should wrap it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're wrap it up. Ah! All right. Uh, well, um, this was an outstanding season, the best yet. I think that's our best. Oh my god, it's been good. It's really fun. Unironically, yeah. I thought this was fucking great. Yeah, Pokemon, yeah, awesome. Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't think we've <laughs> ever talked space. this we much when we didn't have a tier list. Yeah, we yeah. literally we literally squeezed DVD into the last 20 minutes just because we kind of feel like we have to. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, true. But oh, we true, made a good true. point. We made some yeah. really salient yeah. points about Yeah, it became, it became we less about talking about DVD, but more like an, it came, kind of came full circle with the other discussion. It's been quite nice. Yeah. This is Thank you so much. Give yourself Perfect. a hand. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, uh, thanks so much for uh, tuning in, watching wherever you are, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, wherever you are. Romania. Thank you for tuning in. Yeah, Romania. Um, uh, on behalf of uh, Spine Chill, I'm John Wolf. Gary, the Hot Cross, signing off. Cinnobeats, signing off. Doug, running bye, bye. man. Signing off. I wondered, I wondered if you'd do that. I actually wondered if we'd get that. That's so good. What a good callback. Thank you for that. Full no circle. Very nice. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks for bye. tuning in. Anyway, bye. Bye. Hugs and kisses. See you next bye. time. Bye. bye.